Good afternoon. I'm going to call to order the Knox County Board of Commissioners zoning meeting for October 21st at 5 p.m. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Rawls. Present. Commissioner Durrett. Here. Commissioner Oster. Here. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Commissioner Russell. Here. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Lee. Here. Commissioner Thompson. Here. Commissioner Fox. Here. Commissioner Jay. Yep. Commissioner Frazier. Present. All 11 members are present. Thank you. I'll now turn it over to Director Moyers to swear in the individuals that will be testifying. All right. If you're planning to speak to this board on any item that's on the agenda, either for or against, please stand and raise your right hand. If you're signed up to speak, if you're here in opposition, or right, do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God. I take that as a yes. Be seated. Thank you. And I'll now turn it over to Commissioner Jackson for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, with everybody, everybody please stand up. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Turn toward the flag. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item will be the amendments to the agenda. We have number five and number eight deferred to November. We have no withdrawals, no additions. Please note that um, we started this month that we will do the deferrals from last month or m previous months first. So we will start with number 11 to 14 will be at the top of the agenda and then we will move into the uh, regular. Um, approval of minutes. Do we have a motion to approve of last month's minutes? Second. Got a motion from Commissioner Lee, a second by Commissioner Hill. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Clerk, if you'll read the first item, please. Item number 11, 8-G-24-PA is a request of Logan Higgins for comprehensive plan amendment from RC Rural Commercial to SMR Suburban Mixed Residential, property located at 0 West Governor John Sevier Highway, parcel ID 137151 in the 9th Commission District. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Thank you. Now you repeat that, Ben Mullins, 550 West Main Street here for the applicant. Thank you. And do we have opposition to this item? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, Director Brooks. Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the SR Suburban Residential Place Type because it would be an extension of the SR Place Type and meets two required criteria for a plan amendment by a vote of 13 to 0. Thank you. Mr. Mullins, would you like to speak to your project? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, uh, this property, I guess I'll speak. There's two, two motions here. The first one is a plan amendment. Uh, this property is 4.84 uh, acres on the south side of West John Sevier Highway, just south of, uh, or just east of South Point Road. It's in the planned growth area, just across north, across uh, uh, Governor John Sevier Highway, is in the, uh, the uh, urban growth area. And it's about 2,000 feet, uh, a little less than half a mile from the city limits and about 3,300 feet from, uh, from Chapman Highway. Uh, the planning staff recommended the uh, suburban residential SR place type because it would be an extension of the SR place type and meets two of the requ required criteria for a plan amendment. Uh, changing conditions in the area based upon a considerable increase of residential development in the area and a trend of residential rezonings within a half mile of the property and also that the proposed change supports the policies, actions, goals, objectives, and criteria of the uh, comprehensive plan. And, and actually, specifically, staff noted uh, three different policies, policies two, five, and, and six, and be happy to get into more details on those if, if you would like. Um, you know, the property uh, right now is under the rural conservation place type, but if you look at the, uh, the map uh, for the place types, it actually is uh, contiguous to traditional neighborhood place type to the West, which is the uh, the most intensive residential place type that our advanced Knox and comprehensive land use plan allows. And then uh, to the uh, west 
is a, all uh, suburban residential. And so the suburban residential does fit in more nicely with what is there than this little swath of rural uh, 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 conservation that is there currently. And, um, the place type to the uh, west would allow considerations of 24 units an acre, but the SR place type uh, would allow PR to eight dwelling units an acre, which is what we are asking for here. Uh, because the SR place type is already established in the immediate area and because it meets two of the required criteria, we would ask that you follow planning staff and planning uh, commission's recommendation to approve the, uh, the map amendment. Uh, you know, I would note, uh, you know, that we just adopted the, the land use plan and obviously you making uh, amendments to it should be done uh, judiciously. Um, however, uh, I think in this circumstance, given the, the development that's occurred there, this location and its proximity to a commercial node and to the city limits and to Clinton Highway, uh, and the fact that during the rezoning there's uh, imposed conditions on it that's going to buffer and shield this development from the surrounding uh, properties, I, would, I do think that it's appropriate to follow planning staff's analysis and planning commission's recommendation to approve the place type amendment. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, I will look to you for any questions that you have, Mr. Mullins. Commissioner Fox. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Mullins, what uh, development are you referring to that has taken place already? Well, you're looking at, um, to the, uh, if you go to the zoning map on it, you know, to the uh, immediate east of this is a planned residential that is at seven units an acre, and then beyond that is a planned residential of uh, 18 uh, units an acre. A little further west, uh, just in July of this year, there were, it was four units an acre, but it's uh, further west on the property that was approved as well. So this area, because it's proximity, it's not too far out east into the more rural areas along John Sevier. You know, there's been a lot of development there adjacent to the amenities of that commercial node. Okay. Did your client or your client's predecessor in interest approach this county commission in 2022 seeking a change from the current zoning at that time? Yeah, at that time, I think uh, the predecessor, I wasn't involved in that. Uh, under the, uh, the old plan, the old comprehensive plan and sector plans, they'd asked for five units an acre. Uh, there was also some clearing on the property before the rezoning that I think uh, maybe got off to the wrong foot to your predecessor at that point. And uh, the two units an acre was approved. After the Advance Knox uh, initiative went into place, then they, they retained Mr. Higgins, who was the original applicant and an architect, who also happens to be on the Planning Commission, to, uh, to look at uh, and evaluate this under the, the Advance Knox plan that had come into place and, and look at what may be appropriate. And that's when this application was filed. Have there been any changes since April of 2024? What, what changes have taken place since well, April of 2024? there's been uh, significantly more population has been coming in since 2022 uh, forward, and there have been additional reasons. I, I don't, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Mullins. Since April 2024, when the uh, advanced NOx was adopted? In April 20, of 2024, uh, I was talking about the changing conditions from when the oh, rezoning was done my apologies. in 22. Yeah. That's uh, in April of 24, we're looking at what the plans we just adopted would be a proper consideration for this property, which I think is what our, we're charged to do. Okay. My question is, what substantial changes have taken place in the past six months with respect to this area that would necessitate or that would justify a plan amendment? Well, the plan amendment, you have to meet uh, the two criteria, and I'll rely upon staff's analysis. They're a lot smarter than I am on that, but they do... And the, for the plan amendment, uh, they do cite to uh, the changes in conditions. And looking on, par on uh, page two of their agenda, um, there have been considerable increased residential development in this area. Uh, they also look at the policy plans uh, that were in place uh, that this serves. And I would think you could argue there's an error in, in, in this because even though there's agricultural zone property to the east uh, or the west, it is still in the suburban residential place type, and a suburban residential place type this close to the urban growth boundary would be more appropriate uh, for property uh, adjoining West Governor John Severe Highway. Did Have you uh, done any investigation with respect to the difference between the north side of John Severe Highway and the south side uh, regarding character of community? 
Well, I mean, I think uh, at, the, the, at that point, they're pretty similar on both sides, this close to, uh, uh, to uh, Chapman Highway. Uh, you look as you get further south on this, uh, there is additional hillside protection issues and other more sensitive environmental constraints. But this piece of property being just south of uh, John Sevier Highway, I mean, it's still considered a scenic highway. It's still uh, subject to those limitations. Also, the John Sevier Corridor with the 50-foot tree buffer. Uh, the real difference is that this area has not yet been developed where the, most of the areas to the north have been developed. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from any other commissioners? Seeing none, I will look to the district commissioner for the motion. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I move to deny this request for a plan amendment. I have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox, a second by Commissioner Hill, Commissioner Durrett, oh, or Lee, you. I'm sorry. Okay. I heard you over here, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Commissioner Durrett. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Fox, why, why denial? I'm just, I'm just curious, why not any kind of um, conditions or anything like that? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, if you, there, everyone was circulated a letter, which I have a copy for everybody, but it was uh, provided by a constituent of mine, Gayla Guignard. She may be here uh, this evening, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, she went to, at great lengths, to describe the difference between the north side of uh, John Sevier Highway and the south side. The south side is traditionally agricultural, and if you go down uh, th this map does not do the, the, uh, the question justice because it does not show the greater scope of John Sevier Highway in that corridor. There is just to the west of that a, uh, a historical Marbledale John Sevier home, which is uh, agricultural. And this is viewed as a break between a higher density portion of John Sevier Highway uh, close to Mountain Grove versus, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's viewed as a break. In other words, it, it provides a nice buffer between uh, the, the heavy commercial development of Mountain Grove, which is at the intersection of Chapman Highway and John Sevier, uh, and, as well as the, uh, the high density housing that is already uh, proposed to uh, be at that Mountain Grove area. So it's viewed as a good break and there's no reason to continue to extend that, uh, that high density development westward along John Sevier Highway. Rural conservation is a proper, uh, a proper land use. And this body just got done voting on this particular land use six months ago. And I've not really heard any substantive reasons uh, like I've not heard somebody say, well, there's this much more development that's taken place, or here's what the landmark uh, uh, item that creates a, a reason for changing that particular land use. It's just kind of a general, well, there's more development, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I don't see any need for it. I know that I have received uh, numerous emails about uh, not only this particular tract of land, but another tract of land that's gonna be on the agenda uh, here in just a little bit, 1413 Tipson Station Road, and there's heavy, heavy opposition. And if you looked at the opposition to 1413 Tipton Station Road, it applies to this too. The constituents of South Knox County view uh, everything south of John Sevier differently than they view everything north of John Sevier. So, uh, that's, uh, those are just a few of the reasons. I could probably expound and expound, but I'm, I think you get the gist. Yes, thank you, sir. I, I, I understand um, where you're coming from. Something that we don't see very often on, in, up here on the dais in a zoning meeting is when staff and planning commission both approve a, a, a zoning request or a plan amendment. 
request. And so, um, you know, this is this is something that, as actually, Mr. Mullins can ask you a question. Hold on. Please, you you said, and we're quoting from the staff report. Will you please read the staff's recommendations to support? the plan amendment from rural commercial to suburban residential. Yes, it's approved the SR suburban residential place type because it would be an extension of the SR place type uh, and meets two required criteria for the, the plan amendment. And those two required criteria, as I cited previously, are you know that changing conditions in the area based on considerable increase of residential development in the area and a trend in residential zoning within a 0.5 mile radius of the property and the proposed changes support the policies and actions, goals, objectives, and criteria of the, uh, the general plan. Specifically, staff noted the proposed changes supported implementation policy number two, ensure that the development is sensitive to the existing community character. Policy five, creating neighborhoods with a variety of housing types and amenities given its proximity to a large commercial node at the intersection of Chapman Highway and West Gunner John Severe Highway, and policy six, promoting attainable housing. That was staff's recommendation and analysis. So does, um, I know you're representing the client, does your client have a plan for what the neighborhoods would look like since it does mention policy five, creating neighborhoods with a variety of housing types? Y yes, they, and, and uh, I did submit with uh, the email that I sent to all the commissioners uh, last week. Uh, Mr. Higgins is, a, is an architect, and he has laid out uh, approximately 38 uh, townhomes that all meet, you know, the required buffers for the uh, the setbacks from John Severe Highway and the stream buffer for uh, McCall Branch, and uh, would make the site distance for the curve there for you know a, a, an attached housing type that would be. You know, uh, you know, a different type, a more attainable type of housing than your traditional single-family residential that you typically see in that area. And that's, I think, uh, the policies that they mention as far as uh, diversity of housing types and also attainable housing. Okay, thank you. Um, and can and and to the point of of Commissioner Fox, you know, he he asked what has changed in the past six months. Can you? Aside from the adoption of Advanced Knox, which puts this in the, um, sorry. Aside from the adoption of Advanced Knox, which puts this into the the planned growth area, is there anything well, that you can Well, I think it was in to? the planned growth area, as going back as far as 2001. It's been in the planned growth area for, for, for quite some time, but, you know, looking at, you know, the, uh, the different policies that the advanced Knox uh, wanted to implement, and and actually increasing the the uh, the difficulty of changing the plan. At uh, you know, before a plan amendment wasn't required. Now, they they did require a plan amendment, and and we would meet those policies for that. But I mean, this this area you know is is growing pretty pretty significantly, and I think that was uh, the the driving consideration for staff's recommendation. All right. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a substitute motion to approve the SR place type because it would be an extension of the SR place type and meets the two required criteria for plan amendment as referenced by staff and planning commission. I have a substitute motion on the floor by Commissioner Durrett. Do I have a second? I've got a second by Commissioner Hill. Any further discussion? Commissioner Thompson. Um, so this, the extension, the one that's beside it, uh, just to the east, is uh, seven dwelling units an acre. This plan amendment, we would then go through a rezoning, correct? Okay. So this is just the plan amendment. Okay. And then the density would be in the next one. Okay. And you have to have a plan amendment in order to hear the zoning. Madam Chairperson. Commit. Yes, sir. May I make one comment before you vote? Yes, sir. We ought to consider. My name is Mike Brown with South Dole Area Homeowners Association. You know, everything's got to go somewhere. Everything's coming south. Right now, on the drawing board, asked for, and in the planning future, we've identified between Chapman Highway and Alcoa Highway some 1,800 units if they're all built out. 
That's over 6,000 cars a day. You're looking at one spot here today. You've got more of them on John Sevier today to consider. Don't look at just one. Look at the whole package of what you're doing to the whole corridor on this highway. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, look, that uh, resounding uh, speech uh, <laughs> took away my train of thought for a moment. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't see how development is a justification for more development. That, that does, that's, not a, that's a non sequitur. Development does not necessarily equal, well, you got to have more development now. Uh, in fact, I am of the mindset that uh, all development, all the time, whenever people request, is not necessarily good. Not, all development all the time is not always good. Okay. And uh, I have uh, spent the past, well, during my campaign, more than a year meeting with community groups, knocking doors, uh, and speaking to homeowners associations, and there is rabid community sentiment right now against additional high-density development. And community sentiment, if you look at the case law, and I cited case law in some of my uh, items that will be coming up later, community sentiment is a valid basis for legislative action by a county commission. So uh, I am here to represent the wishes of my community, and I don't think any of you would, uh, would seek to do any less. And if you disagree with my position on development, then I would certainly defer to what the citizens of your particular uh, district uh, desire and what each of you would desire with respect to uh, what you believe is in the best interest of the citizens of your community and the county. I am reporting to you what I believe is, uh, first of all, in the best interest of uh, District 9 and what the community has related to me. And so I would certainly defer to, to, my, or to my fellow colleagues uh, if they felt passionately about a subject, but um, I ask that my colleagues defer to me about uh, a matter that is of great importance to my constituents. So uh, that's what I have to, to say about that. All development does not justify new development, uh, the, there's no reason to extend the, uh, that particular land use to west past uh, uh, Hickory Brook Way on the south side. And I want to point out that the Appendix A of the Knox County Code, Section 6.3, that's what discusses standards for amendments. And it says the proposed amendment shall be necessary because of substantially changed or changing conditions in the area and zones affected. I still have not heard how this has happened since April 2010. I mean, 2024, April 2024. Uh, that was six months ago. What has changed? Nothing has changed. This body voted on a document six months ago. And I think that we should continue with uh, what was adopted unless there is a really good reason. So uh, that's my discussion on this matter. And I move, a, I move to substitute. I can't. Uh, yeah, you can't. I'm Oops. sorry, I move to amend. I move to amend this particular uh, substitute motion uh, to have the land use be uh, Designated agricultural. Director Moyers, we've got a substitute. <laughs> Guys, we, we know that you're in support of all of this, and we've got a really long night ahead of us. So if we can move on um, with this, we've got some questions for the law director. Director Moyers, we've got a substitute motion on the floor, so we need to deal with that first, correct? Yes. 
Uh, now, a substitute motion can be um, amended, but not if it negates the, the motion that's on the floor. I, I'm not sure I understand your motion. That's, it's, a, uh, it's a motion to amend the substitute motion actually for the land use of agricultural. That's what it is. You can amend a substitute yeah. It's, it's already. I don't think you can amend a substitute. Motion. Here, I think you can. I, I, I think well, agriculture type. is not a place type, I don't think. Right. Is it? No. It's not. That's a zoning. So, so this, is, this is a plan amendment, so we're talking about amending the place, place type, type here. And I don't right. think agriculture is a place it's type. Okay, uh, now, I'm sorry. Zone, you could go to the zoning and, and maybe make that motion, but, but for the purpose of the plan amendment, I don't think that's that's correct. Yes, I, I, you're right, uh, Mr. Moyers. Uh, well, I just I amended then to uh, uh, maintain the land use at rural conservation. Uh, okay, now 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 the the problem with that procedurally is your amendment basically would negate the the substitute motion. So. The way to handle that is to vote down the substitute motion. Uh, I don't think it's appropriate to amend the substitute motion by saying I want to amend it to kill it. That, that's that that's not an appropriate use of the amendment process. All right. Uh, Commissioner Jay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Snowden, what is the uh, capacity of John Severe Highway? Are there any? Um, future projects on the books for John Sevier Highway, and if so, what are those? Yeah, I was looking at the, while you were having that conversation, I was looking at the, the average daily traffic out there. The, the most recent count we have is uh, from last year, and it's essentially 15,000 cars a day. Um, you know, really on a stretch, stretch of road like John Sevier, you have wider lanes, turn lanes, things like that. Really, your capacity is more formed by your intersections, your signalized intersections at Martin Mill and Mountain Grove when it kind of backs traffic up. But to put that in perspective, we have uh, North Shore Drive uh, is a two-lane facility that has 19,000 cars a day on it. Uh, so as far as the capacity number, uh, it does have some capacity left in it, obviously. Um, one of the projects that we're putting forth as part of the, the mobility plan is being contemplated now. We see the need that this, this roadway is going to have over the next you know, 10 to 15 years. We are putting forth a request for the mobility plan to be considered by the TPO to expand this roadway from three lanes to five lanes. Uh, now, obviously, that, that's going to take a lot of time because that is you know, a state process, but uh, over the next 15 to 20 years, it would be the county's hope and desire to see the state make improvements somewhere along those lines to add that additional capacity. And what is the, um, what's the timeline for finishing the Alcoa Highway connectors? Roughly. I mean, just, just that's that one That's a moving section. target. Um, obviously, that's not a county project, so I can't really speak very informed on it. Um, but, I mean, I would think it, you're probably le at least looking at three to five years to get uh, – the, mul there's multiple phases ongoing, you know, so that have different time frames. But uh, the section um, adjacent to, to Alcohol Highway at John Sevier, I would anticipate being done the next, you know, two years potentially. Um, just to, uh, thank you, Mr. Snowden. Um, a question, a question for Commissioner Fox. Um, you you asked the question of what has changed. I mean, John Sevier Highway is, it's been there, it's been established, it is what it is, with the exception of um, potential future TPO, you know, projects or widening. Is your is your position that this major corridor should never be developed on? Any further? My position is that with respect to South Knox County, there should be a breather while I uh, continue to gain sophistication in the questions that we are being presented with as far as uh, high density development. Um, I'm not saying never, but uh, there are actually some, some issues, some concerns that were 
presented to me by uh, Seymour Volunteer Fire Department with respect to high density or, or continued development in South Knox County. You know, um, a lot of South Knox County uh, is covered by Seymour Volunteer Fire Department, and, and I, I think it's fair to say they feel a little stretched. Uh, I will, in fairness, I will report to uh, my fellow commissioners that um, it looks like the the sewer capacity issue is not of concern, and that's because of uh, a great job being done by the Knox County or Knox Chapman Water, who uh, who has an ownership interest in Maryville Utilities and uh, has, I guess, uh, reserved sufficient capacity to uh, accommodate current needs and even uh, uh, additional needs. So, so that has been addressed. But, but there is an issue with fire uh, response. And uh, that may, in let, me, to that, let me rephrase my question. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase my question, okay. please. We just, we just spent multiple years going through an advanced NOx process, an advanced NOx process that was engaged across the entire community, north, south, east, west with tons of community input and tons of time and effort by this commission and, and our really, really hardworking planning department. The community as a whole, including South Knoxville, said collectively as a voice, which we codified, we want more development in a denser capacity on major corridors so that we can have less capacity that we can have. So we can have less development in the more rural areas of our county. That's, that is a paraphrasing of what that study said and what the community input said. And that is whether you are in Carnes or Hardin Valley or South Knoxville or, or East Knoxville. Um, and so I guess my question is, being that John Sevier Highway is a major corridor it, would this would more density on major corridors not fit that overall community plan, or is your position that this is not this is not exactly what we you know the community said it wanted in advanced Knox, and therefore you know pull up the drawbridge in South Knoxville? I guess that, I wanted to know kind of what the precedence is going forward because this is the first of probably a hundred of these discussions we're going to have this year. We're not going to slow down and the amount of people growing and coming into Knox County or developing or welcoming their families back here. I appreciate that. Yes, you bring up a great point and I've, I've been trying to make it. That is that this body spent two years and lots of money coming up with a plan that said the best use of this land, uh, they're designated as uh, parcel 192, I can't quite see it. The, the, the particular parcel we're talking about is rural conservation. And so what has changed in six months? This is not like five years down the road. This is six months. What's changed in six months to cause everybody to throw their hands up and say, wow, not even the zoning is incorrect. The whole land use is wrong. We, were, we got it so wrong six months ago that we got to completely change this land use. You make a great point. Uh, and... I think there needs to be a, uh, well, what the community wants, and again, that's a valid basis. What the community wants is a breather. And that is a valid basis for saying no under the law. And so that's what I'm doing here. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Tom. Come on, guys. We're trying to do county business, okay? Let the commissioners be able to speak and say what they need to say. Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a question for uh, Mr. Mullins. Um, because obviously, you know, coming from a, a very rural district, I'm, I am, I'm sympathetic to the, to the crowd. So, <clears throat> but is there um, any plan for connectivity to the um, to the land beside it, uh, I think that's owned by Rocky Rocky Hill Land. Um, in, in any sort of connectivity, there's nothing land. Uh, we we've not uh, you, we're, we're not affiliated with the land beside us, and, and right. don't have a, a connection with them. And, and you know, there's obviously you. 
there's a, a McCall Branch there, there's a, a creek there as well. That uh, so I don't know if there's any plans for connectivity, but I think you know the, the point is this is so close to that commercial node, and we're not you know we're not extending it too far out into sure. the, the rural areas. This is in the area that I mean, just right across the street is urban growth, even though right. they they have a plan map up there that's still RC, the same as what's here, and and I don't know. If you have cars in development, you know, 150 feet north, why is that different than 150 feet south? Right. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, my, like Director Snowden, um, the, the reason and I'm, I, I asked you about the connectivity is it seems like on, on John Sevier Highway in that area, there's, there's several um, connection points to John Sevier, um, but there aren't really any traffic lights. In there, as far as traffic calming, getting on John Severe, getting off John Severe, um, and I'm decently familiar with that because um, my veterinarian is, <laughs> and it's in South Knoxville. Um, but is is do you know? Obviously, it's a state highway, but do you know if there's any plans to put in any traffic lights, traffic calming, anything like that in the future? The, there's not. Uh, one of the things that the state looks at is when. Traffic volume, traffic signals have warrants that have to be met, and the state really likes to see eight-hour volume warrants met. You know, the, a lot of these intersections, during that peak time, they do meet that warrant. They do create create enough delay in the in the AM or PM peak. But the state takes the position that they want to see that signal generating enough traffic for an eight-hour period of time, which mm -hmm. most of these intersections like this won't. Right. So I would anticipate that, or at least I'm not aware of any, uh, you know any additional signals or potential signals that would be installed as part of these uh, developments, either this one or the one adjacent. Okay. But now, is this is this section of John Sevier, is it the, the four-lane with the median, or is it not? It is. It is a three-lane, uh, one-lane in your direction, center turn lane, and, and some shoulders. So it is three-lane at this location. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Madam Chair. My, my comments really um, kind of um, go to Commissioner Fox because I feel your pain. Um, I think one of the speakers said that, uh, you know, all the growth now is coming south, which the truth of the matter is all four quadrants of our county are, are still highly impacted. Um, as, and I'm speaking from the one that's had the very most, and uh, it it makes my stomach turn just about every time I have something like this come up in my district too. And the truth is that if if we always deferred to what the commissioner of the district wanted, because that was always what the people wanted, we would probably never build another thing in this county because the truth is nobody wants it next door to them. Another truth, though, is that we do continue to grow, and we are heavily impacted by, by all the population that's, that's um, been, been coming in. I know one of the criteria that's always thrown my way is um, the, uh, uh, the roads, the roads, the roads. And in this case, John Severe Highway is a major corridor, and it makes it very difficult to uh, to negate that, because in fact, as Commissioner Jay did say, the purpose was to create more density around major corridors so that outlying areas could maintain less density as we continue to grow. So, for for those reasons, as much as I appreciate what you're saying, and I appreciate the pain you're feeling, especially given what's grown on that side of the road right down into it, the way that zoning lies, I would tend to support this plan amendment. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Director Brooks, I have a question. Um, through the, the comprehensive plan process, we tended to put RC in places where there is hillside. There isn't hillside directly on this property, but there is hillside to the south. Can you explain to everyone why 
RC is most appropriate in areas that could be affected by hillside. Also to the south, we have a FEMA flood, flood area um, and a blue line stream. Yes, I, um, Commissioner, that's why I was gonna point out, it's not just hillsides, but it's any kind of environmental constraints. So that's something that, that was looked at. But yes, specifically we were, when we were originally placing that um, conservation, rural conservation place type, we were looking at uh, those steeper slopes. Okay, and it is rural conservation, not rural commercial. That's correct. Husband. Okay. Yes. And then Mr. Mullins, I have a question for you. Looking at the zonings that are allowed in the rural conservation place type, um, did your applicant consider those zonings? Um, we talked about that, uh, and we, we and, and I, Mr. Higgins is here. He could probably go into more detail about the conversations about what went into filing the application because I was not involved in that process at that time. But with the rural conservation, uh, you would be limited to five units an acre planned residential. That's the, 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 the limits of the partially related. And we were looking at, because we were looking at an attached uh, housing, about maybe uh, emphasizing that a little bit more and, and, and speaking towards the, the need for the diversity of housing stock in, in this area. Because I will say, I, I do have a concern about the environmental constraints um, with these properties. The, the number one issue that I hear from constituents is stormwater runoff and, and water drainage issues. And I do have concerns that because there is a 100-year flood plain uh, directly south, and this seems to be going downhill, um, I, I think that should be a consideration in, in looking at this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a question for uh, Director Snowden. Director Snowden, uh, being a South Knox County resident, I'm sure you can relate what John Severe Highway is like on a weekday from about 4.30 to 5.30, especially at the intersections of uh, Martin Mill and, uh, and John Severe Highway. Do you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we, uh, we have challenges with that light. It, uh, obviously, there's a high volume of through traffic, and any time you have to stop that traffic to allow that uh, side, tra side street traffic to safely exit, uh, it does create backups. So, yes, sir, that there is backups out there, uh, certainly in the PM peak specifically. And they back up even to Government Farm Road or, or past that almost all, all the way to uh, Crenshaw, as a matter of fact, at times, don't they? They do, sir. I've, and, I've seen it actually even further than that. Yes, and, and about how far is that backup? Uh, let me look. Government farms right at 4,000 feet, um, and then Crenshaw's uh, about 7,000 feet. Um, so it, uh, it, it can be backed up. Some of that, we did have some issues with the signal that we had some loops out. Uh, but even under best of circumstances, Commissioner, yeah, uh, it's a challenge to stop that, that flow of traffic in the afternoons just due to the large volume of through traffic. Thank you, Director Snowden. Madam Chair, may I also uh, make a comment? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I did want to direct, uh, and I appreciate so much Commissioner Hill's uh, comments, and, and I recognize that sometimes what can be good for the county may override what is good for uh, a particular district, and that uh, um, that we, we all, it, well, and, and as far as what the Commissioner Jay said, you know, what about this, this idea of corridors? We, we all agreed that, okay, we'll keep the density at the corridors and we won't uh, take it past that. Well, that would all be well and good, except when it came to 2814 Tipton Station Road, which is going to be coming up a little bit from now, which is way off the corridor, off of a rural road, about uh, a mile and a half off, where the staff recommended two units per acre and agreed with the citizens, this body, before I was elected, used density at the corridor to justify density in the rural part of the county. So it seems like uh, there's some talking out of both sides of the mouth or using convenience. And I don't, I'm not talking about Commissioner Hill, but I'm, it seems like we, we need to have a 
cohesive or consistent approach because these same arguments should have been used to deny, if, if that's what the deal was, we're all going to shake hands and say, okay, just, just density at the quarter, that's it. Then that particular request for zoning, and I'm not picking on Mr. Mullins here, but he, he represents that person too, or that client. Uh, that should have been denied, but it wasn't denied. In fact, it was approved in the face of both the, the community and the, uh, uh, the planning staff. So uh, that, that's why I can't give serious, uh, serious consideration to this deal of we're just going to keep this at the corridor because when it comes time for the rubber to hit the road, that deal's not being kept. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just had a couple of comments. I appreciate Commissioner Hill and appreciate um, Commissioner Fox. I will look, I have a comment to make about representing your district. And I don't feel like anybody knows their district better than that, dist than that commissioner. Even though Mr. Fox hasn't been on this commission very long as elected, he has been working on this for a year. And I've met a number of people in District 9, and they're opposed to this. And I, we all got elected by people who put their trust in us. And I don't think we should ever ignore what the people in the community want. And I appreciate all the people that came out here today. If we just remember a few months ago, the Chodo project, that there was a huge outcry against that. And what happened? That went away. So these people that showed up today and Commissioner Fox are representing what the community wants. And I don't think it's fair for the commission to deny and overlook what the community, the people who chose to live here, move here, want. So I think that should go into consideration to every vote, that the people in this district matter, what they want, and I will be supporting Commissioner Fox on this. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other discussion, Commissioner Durrett, would you like to uh, restate your substitute motion so we know what we're voting on? Madam Chair, thank you. Um, my, the substitute motion was to approve the SR place type because it would be an extension of the SR place type and meets two required criteria for plan amendment. Thank you. We had the motion made by Commissioner Durrett, a second by Commissioner Hill. Uh, Mr. Thompson. I'm sorry. Um, just for point of clarification, if if the plan amendment, if, if this doesn't pass and is the, is the rezoning still on the table without the plan amendment or no? If the substitute motion doesn't pass, we'll go back to Mr. Uh, Commissioner Fox's original motion. Correct. And if, if, if it is denied, is there, a, is there a rezoning still or is it stopped? Assuming that, assuming that PR at the density that's been requested is not allowed in the right. um, RC zone, then there would be no reason for it to go forward. I don't know if Mr. Mullins would have a, a, sub, a okay. separate position, but... I, I would like okay. a chance to address that if we get there. Okay. okay. Thank you. So right now, right now we're going to vote on the substitute motion. So all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay, let's do a roll call, please. Commissioner Rawls? Aye. Commissioner Durrett? Aye. Commissioner Oster? Aye. Commissioner Jackson? Aye. Commissioner Russell? No. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Lee? No. Commissioner Thompson? No. Commissioner Fox? No. Commissioner Jay? Aye. Commissioner Frazier? No. Motion carries. All right, so the substitute motion passes from six to five. Next item, please. Item number 12, 
8-0-24-RZ is a request of Logan Higgins for rezoning from PRK planned residential up to two dwelling units per acre to PRK planned residential up to eight dwelling units per acre. Property located at 0 West Governor John Severe Highway, parcel ID 137151 in the 9th Commission District. The applicant <coughs> present. I'm here. <laughs> um, any object, uh, any opposition to this? I don't see any that signed up. So, Director Moyer or Director Brooks, would you read the recommendation, please? Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the PR plan residential zone up to eight dwelling units per acre because it is consistent with the Knox County Comprehensive Plan, subject to four conditions. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Would you like to speak to this? Yes, thank you. Um, I appreciate the conversation uh, for the, the plan amendment. Uh, the rezoning request here is planned residential, which is properties already zoned planned residential. Uh, but with the, the plan amendment, we are asking for considerations and planning staff and planning commission recommended considerations for eight dwelling units an acre. Uh, in context for this uh, 4.84 uh, acre parcel, we're looking at 38 uh, units. That, sub, that recommendation for approval was subject to four conditions. Uh, maintain a tree buffer of 50 foot depth along Governor John Sphere Highway, except for the area that would allow access. Uh, a landscaping plan for the 50 foot buffer yard along the front of John Sphere Highway is required to be submitted as part of the concept plan or development plan. No clearing or grading of the site shall be permitted until the concept plan or the grading plan is, or the development plan is moving forward. And Provide a vegetated buffer consisting of a type B with uh, landscaping screen of 20 foot depth uh, and adjacent to the agricultural zone property to the south side. Um, and I do appreciate um, Commissioner Fraser's comments about the environmental constraints. This this property, there is property with environmental constraints to the south. This property doesn't have hillside on it, it doesn't have floodway. Uh, and stormwater is always going to, to be a concern. I think maintaining a, a very large uh, buffer as recommended by staff is, is a good way to uh, mitigate against those potential concerns, as is, you know, uh, Director Snowden, Engineering Public Works, holding our feet to the fire with regard to the stormwater ordinances, not just, you know, as part of the development plan itself, but uh, during construction, you know, a lot of times that is, is an issue. Um, the, uh, we think the, the density is appropriate um, for this, uh, this parcel of property, um, especially with these conditions in place. We did present, Mr. Higgins did present a, um, a very uh, conceptual, but a, a plan for the 38 town home units with uh, the one entrance onto to Governor John Sevier. Uh, it's able to maintain the stream buffers for McCall Branch uh, as well. And there's going to be, uh, not just on this property, uh, you know, there's going to be a screen all the way around this property, but even to the properties to the, uh, to the east in that subdivision, there's quite a bit of uh, very large acreage properties that have a natural buffer built in as well. And so, you know, when this property is developed, uh, it will not be visible and there not be uh, a visible impact to the adjacent properties. Um, so with that, I would ask that you follow planning uh, staff's and planning commission's recommendation to approve increase the density on this PR zone property uh, to eight units an acre with the four conditions uh, to be imposed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will open the floor up to commissioners with questions. First is Commissioner Lee. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay. <laughs> um, Commissioner Thompson. Um, first uh, to Director Brooks. Um, I, I, I would like to commend you all for uh, one of the conditions uh, that we, we often see uh, when something is rezoned, uh, that uh, nothing be cleared until the development plan is in place. Um, thank you for that, because obviously the environmental concerns with this piece of property, um, we know that cleared land, the runoff, runoff is an issue. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'll turn it over to District Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move to deny this rezoning. And for the current density of two units per acre, which is what this body granted in 2022, and uh, to remain. Okay, we have, a con um, we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox. Do I have a second? A second by Commissioner Lee. Commissioner Durrett. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to offer a substitute motion to approve the PR planned residential zone with up to eight dwelling units an acre because it's consistent with Knox County Comprehensive Plan, subject to the four conditions that um, were, well, we don't need to read those into record. They're in the, they're in the plan. Right, with the four or conditions. The, the record. I have substitute motion by Commissioner Durrett. Do I have a second? I have a second by Commissioner Hill. We've got the substitute motion on the floor. All those in favor, aye. 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 Madam Chair, I uh, would like to discuss this. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I would amend this motion to uh, three units per acre instead of eight units per acre. Hold on one second, I've got. Oh, I'm waiting on Director Bro or Moyers right now. <laughs> I'd like to step in front of him. Okay, so we're going to vote on the amended motion. We, we, well, we have to vote on his amendment and then vote on what's left, whether it's amended or not. So we need to vote on his amendment first. Okay. An amendment can't be amended except so. Right. Okay. Anyone. All right. So we're voting on the amendment to three dwelling units an acre. Motion made by Commissioner Fox, second by Commissioner Lee. Okay, so that's Madam, what Madam we're Chair, at. just a clarification. So, Director Moyers, you you can unilaterally am, propose to no, amend somebody else's substitute motion before. A, a, well, it's not unilateral. A substitute motion is subject to being amended. Okay, it requires a second. It requires a vote. If the vote okay. is successful, so there's a third then, layer. Then the substitute that... motion will be to approve three units per acre rather than two. Okay, so that's a that's as far as you layers. can go. You couldn't right. move to amend that amendment. Okay, so that's as far down as we can go. Okay, thank but, you. Yeah. Okay, everybody on the same page? All right. Um, so all in favor of the amended substitute motion, say aye. 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 No. Uh, no. no. It's, it's first we're voting on Commissioner Fox's amendment. So that's we need what to, That's what well, I said. Well, she said the amended motion. Well, okay. It, I, is. I, 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 it is the amended motion. Calm down. No, he's a man up here telling me what to do. All right. All right. Ma We're voting on the Madam Chair, may I make a point of order? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think my motion has been seconded. So it for, was. It, it was. was. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank so you. We, all right. Thank we, you. we just need to vote on the amended substitute okay. motion. So all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. no. Aye. Roll call, please. Commissioner Durrett? No. Commissioner Oster? No. Commissioner Jackson? No. Nay. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Hill? No. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Jay? No. Commissioner Frazier? Yes. Commissioner Rawls? No. All right, so that motion fails. So we're back to our substitute motion, correct? All right. Our substitute motion was to approve her planning commission with the four conditions, and that was seconded by Commissioner Hill. That's what we're voting on now. So all in favor, aye. Aye. All no. opposed? No. no. Roll call, please. Commissioner Oster? Uh, yes. Commissioner Jackson? Commissioner Russell? Commissioner Hill? Commissioner Lee? 
Could you repeat the motion again? I'm confused where we're at. Yeah, we're on the substitute motion by Commissioner Durrett of accepting the Planning Commission's recommendations with the four conditions. Thank you. No. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner Fox? No. Commissioner Jay? Commissioner Frazier? Yes. Commissioner Rawls? Yes. Commissioner Durrett? Yes. That motion passes eight to three. Next item, please. 13. Item number 13, 6-I-24-RZ is a request of Julie Cloninger for rezoning from A Agricultural to CN Neighborhood Commercial. Property is located at 5917 Thorn Grove Pike, parcel ID 097100 in the 9th Commission District. Is the applicant present? Yes. Hi. If you'll give your name and address for the record, please. Julie Cloninger, 7235 Nichols. Knoxville 37920. Okay, and will you pull that microphone down just I'm a little sorry. bit? Oh, you're fine. You're okay. fine. Okay, good deal. Do we have any opposition to this item? Seeing none, Director Brooks? Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the CN Neighborhood Commercial Zone because it is adjacent to the CA biz General Business Zone and located on a collector road by a vote of 13 to 1. Thank you. And would you like to speak to your project? Um, it's just going to be an um, auto detail shop. Okay. Do we have any questions? Commissioner Thompson. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Frazier. Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. I just have a quick question for planning. Okay. Uh, staff recommended to deny the CN because it doesn't meet all the criteria. Could you just um, give us some more information regarding that, please? Certainly. Um, so planning staff did recommend denial. Um, and the reasoning was there have not been any substantial changes in the area in recent years that warrant the proposed amendment. The area remains rural in character and is primarily composed of houses on larger than half acre lots along Thorn Grove Pike. Um, on the south side of Thorn Grove Pike, there's a series of CA general commercial zone properties. However, the majority of these have not been developed. Um, as commercial and the subject property does not meet the location criteria within the intent statement of the district the property is located neither at an intersection nor at the edge of an established neighborhood and furthermore it can be argued that the area does not have enough residential density to warrant the addition of more commercially zoned properties thank you director Brooks thank you um, Commissioner Fox thank you madam chair Ms. Cloninger, uh, you and I discussed this project. Yes. And uh, you have agreed to just one driveway in and out of this particular parcel. Is that correct? That is correct. And, and you've agreed to a 100-foot uh, vegetation screen. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And uh, you, there are some bare spots along the driveway that you're going to fill in with additional vegetation to the, meet yes. that 100-foot uh, condition? Leland Cypress, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. Um, I, I remember last month we we discussed um, where there, there's property adjacent to it that, that looks like it is commercial, but there's only, I guess, uh, part of the property is zoned commercial and the other part is left um, residential. Is that correct? Um, is that something that, that staff would consider? Um, because I know, I know in, in the 8th, we have out the rural area, that obviously there were some properties, commercial, that were grandfathered in, um, where a small portion of the property is commercial and the rest of it is left either ag or residential. Um, well, the, the Planning Commission, I will just reiterate, uh, the Planning Commission did vote to approve the request approve of the applicant. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Seeing no other questions, I will turn it over to Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move to approve this rezoning request Would with the conditions of a 100-foot vegetation barrier up to the, uh, the singular driveway entering into and exiting from the parcel. Second. Okay. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. Could we just get a, a little bit of clarification about that 100-foot buffer? Is it around the perimeter? 
It, there is a, if you look at the, the frontage uh, of that property, if you were to look at a, uh, uh, the aerial view, the, if you want to pull that up, I, I'd encourage you to, yes. You can see that, uh, you, you can see the, the resident, or not the residence, but the structure uh, there. It's actually, the structure is about 150 feet off of uh, Thorn Grove Pike. And so you can see that there's a, a su substantial uh, vegetation uh, barrier between the, or screen, I guess is the word, between the uh, structure and the road. And you can see that there is a, a dry, one driveway, and Ms. Clonger's agreed she's not going to have two driveways in like you might imagine a, a gas station or something having. Uh, just that one entrance, uh, and, and, but she's going to fill in the vegetation along the driveway so that it's a, uh, a solid screen. And if you look at the, uh, the, the perspective from uh, Google, map and you're, you're driving down the road, you can see even in the wintertime, it, it shrouds that, that structure. So uh, I, think this is a, I think this is a fair condition. I, I do take into account that uh, on the south, south side of Thorn Grove Pike, there's a, a number of commercial properties zoned. And, and just uh, to allay anyone's fears, I think there's a hard stop uh, with Marbledale Baptist Church uh, on the north side of Thorn Grove Pike, just uh, one very narrow parcel or uh, down, or two very narrow parcels down, and then on the uh, on the south side, there's already a, a, a residential development. So I think that's a hard stop for any continued uh, commercial expansion, uh, and, and I think that uh, we can feel confident that uh, this is a, a good outcome for Ms. Cloninger. She's an entrepreneur, and uh, and I can appreciate that, and 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 that's why. Commissioner Fox, I want to make sure that I heard. Did you add the condition as the one driveway? I yes, wanted, I did. You did? Yes, okay. Yes. Just making sure I didn't hear that. So, um, Commissioner Jay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, Commissioner Fox, I think the clarification from staff to put into the final report is uh, just to, for clarification is 150 or 100 foot barrier on John Severe. Because if, you, if it was contiguous, she doesn't have 100 feet between the edge of her property line and the other. So is that what? your intention? She, see how to the west, she couldn't have 100. So if you set a 100-foot barrier around the whole perimeter, she couldn't achieve that. She'd be out of compliance immediately. So <laughs> just you're talking about you, just Thor Tipton. Sorry, not John Sevier, just Tipton Station, correct? Thorn Grove. Thorn or Thorn, Grove. Sorry, Thorn Grove. Yeah. Just alone. <laughs> God, it's going to be a long night, folks. <laughs> so, so, is that your clarification of a hundred foot barrier along Thorn Grove? Yes, and and I'll explain. It's hard to see because this is a you know we're we're pretty high off the ground here, but the the driveway does not go to the very western edge of this parcel. It actually is it's uh, in from the western edge of the parcel by I don't know fifteen feet or something, and so there is vegetation on the other side mm -hmm. of the driveway. And, and she would, right. uh, there would be vegetation screening that part of the driveway as well. So. Yes, that's correct. Does that answer your question, Director Brooks? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, all right. Okay, we have a motion on the floor um, with a second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Best of luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Item number 14, 4-0-24-RZ is a request of William Dale Roten for rezoning from A Agricultural to RB General Residential, property located at 611 West Governor John Sevier Highway, parcel ID 137-14401 in the 9th Commission District. Thank you. Is the uh, applicant present? <laughs> if you'll come on down, sir, and we don't rush. I want you to hurt yourself. Thank you. Sir, if you can give your name and address for the record, please. It's William Dale Roten, 4315 French Road. Okay. No. And do we have any opposition no. for this item? Yes, sir. So um, what we'll do is the applicant gets five minutes. You'll get five-minute rebuttal. And right now I'm going to ask Director Brooks to read the recommendation. 
Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the RB General Residential Zone because it is consistent with the sector plan and a minor extension of the zone with a revision of condition number one to extend the type B landscape screen from the existing vegetation on the eastern boundary to the northern boundary of the parcel. Thank you. And the clock has started, sir. So if you would like to speak to your project, you'll go first. Can I? Was there Typically, someone? we do the applicant first. So if you'll do that, and then you can rebut after he's done. Can I let him go first? No, you have to, you go, have first. to go first. Okay, go first. Okay. <laughs> and then you can speak to him. Okay. You can speak after All he right. does. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> well, you may not can hear me. I'm getting confused because I'm on the oxycodone, so I'm just. <laughs> well, there you go. That will do. I it. told you all when I was here before that you know you might find me in this kind of position. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the rezoning was uh, it started back several months ago. The uh, County Knox County Commission, the Planning Committee, the Senior Planning Staff voted unanimously and it's 13 and 0 unanimously to uh, extend this uh, zone from. Uh, a to RB simply because all the properties surrounding it, if you've got a picture of that, I hope you do, I've got a map of it, I thought you may have a picture of it, is all RB. Uh, this, of, the, of the joining lots, uh, there is 13 or 15 total lots counting the, on John's Fair side on the right, uh, which would be um, uh, south, I suppose. And then on the back side across the road from um, uh, Abner Cruz, there's all RB zoning. Six over here, seven over here, and there's one right beside of me that's not zoned, hadn't been attempted to be zoned. The lady is very old. The two I own, uh, one is here now. I was going to, and that's what delayed some, I was going to get both of these lots involved at the same time, but Evidently, the zonings have changed, and the Planning Commission said, will not you go through this zoning first, and we can do this through, they think, through the uh, BZA is what they think. So that's why I have let them s settle that. So I'm just simply asking that you would please uh, honor uh, an RV zoning where there's all, all RV zoning around that location. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll let the opposition come up and have his time. Thank you. And then just stand real close right there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Mike Brown, South Knox Doyle Area Homeowners Association. Okay. And I've known Dale probably 30 years, bought a lot of cars from him. We're good friends, but we're butting heads on this one. <laughs> Let me go back to what I said a while ago about John Severe Highway being a traffic mover and talking about the 1,800 units and how many cars. I misfigured. Let me tell you what that 1,800 units, if they're built out, will produce. At seven cars per, which is what NPC recommends, that's 12,600 cars a day. Mr. Snowden sat over here and told us that the capacity was 18,000 a day. So what are we going to do? You've got about a half a dozen pieces coming up. As I mentioned a while ago, you need to consider all of them together. You just approved eight on this one. Are you going to go along and give everybody eight? Then you're going to have more than that 1,800 time you get done. You need to look at what's going on in the neighborhoods. This little piece of property is 0.89 tenths of an acre. His first proposal was nine condos on it. Then it went down to seven. Now he doesn't know for sure what he wants to do on it. My contention and our contention of the Homeowners Association is there should be no more than three on that piece of property, four absolute max. So I'm asking you right now to look at this thing. All these pieces of around him are acre or bigger pots, plots. Then you're going to stick a hodgepodge right here on the corner of it, which is going to be a black eye to the neighborhood. The fact that shows up is the NPC's recommendation was that they got to put that screen all the way up to Dick Four Lane to hide it from the neighbors. Doesn't that resonate? 
we're, we're opposed to this, all this number on here, and I say, we can live with three, absolute four of the max. But while I'm up here, let me say this. Madam Chairperson, you mentioned a while ago twice about quieting down the audience. I sat in that chair right over there for 10 years. We never failed to hear the residents when they come before. This is their day in court. This is the only court action they have, is to sit here before you and plead their case. So I ask you earnestly to let the people plead their case. Also, please turn up the volume where we can hear out here. I, I'm on the second row and I can't hear and I got hearing aids that boost the sound. Also, turn the freaking heat down. It's cold and crap in here. <laughs> Well, I can't do anything about the heat or the volume. So, um, and I am very respectful, thank you, for people being down here, and I have no problem. But if we're trying to get commissioners to have conversation, we need to be able to hear that conversation. So we have to do county business also, and I would think if you sat in this seat, you would appreciate that. So thank you for your comment. Mr. Roden, would you like to have a rebuttal? May I, please? Yes, you may. Uh, poor is a property where it's at. I've already bought the property beside it and going to include it, and we'd be glad to tell you that, which puts it over an acre of property uh, at the same time. And there's two lots there now. It's just an old house was sitting on the old lot. And I didn't want to tear that house, excuse me, tear the house down until I got this fruit because it's just been one thing after another, it seems like. On the other small minor lot, which cannot be built on, I've tried to buy it. It's a trailer. And he's speaking of an eyesore, I agree with him. It is an eyesore, so is the house, so is the mobile home that's there. It's been hit, and it looks terrible. And I've tried every way in the world to buy it. I want to put some condos in there. And he said, how many? I don't know, because I want to see what looks nice. I do not want to destroy this neighborhood. I have no intentions of destroying this neighborhood. Uh, I would love to put garages on the condos, because I think they need them there. It's road noise and put trees up front to, to box it off. Uh, the normal zoning, and they approved it was up to 12. I don't think it needs 12 there, but I won't know how many. And you know, you know, I can't sit here and say he. People get mad at me, but it seems like because I can't say, I want to make it look nice. Uh, I think I've mentioned, and I do have some grandchildren. I like for them to live there if they want to. I mean, I don't want it to be someplace that's bad. I mean, you know, that's the purpose of developing something. But anyway, uh, I would. I would love for to have your uh, vote to let it be approved as the rest of the area is approved, and we'll all be like that one day, except I would like for it to be nice to start with and build something nice to start with there. So uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions, but that's all I got to say, I guess. Thank you. And we will open the floor up uh, to commissioners for questions. Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, questions for the applicant and also planning. The RB um, zone is not related in the suburban residential place type. During those conversations at, at planning, was RA or RAE uh, considered? They are directly related to suburban residential. Well, I spoke with the planning staff when all this started, mm -hmm. when I bought this property, and um, you get less lines, you got more options on the, on the RB zoning for building condos there. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, and they said it, it's all flat. There's no like the previous property. There was drainage problems and this problem. It's flat. It's a beautiful piece of property. Uh, it's flat. It's level. It's you know. It's going to be it's going to be nice when you get through. But you got to get there. And then also, um, was access on Abner Cruz Road was that considered? There was actually access on both roads. It's two different lots. But would you consider access on Abner Cruz? Well, I would love to have the access on John Sevier uh, for simply because of, the, of you pulling in and out. But, I mean, I don't mind the access on Abner Cruz either. Can you not have it on both? Is that not possible? You would have to determine that during concept. Yeah, do that through this. Right. Or through right. so okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Director Brooks, did you want to respond to my question? I'll just say, so this application was originally submitted... I believe in look at the application. So it was submitted in advance of the of, of the comprehensive plan being adopted. 
So that's why that wasn't taken into consideration. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But we do have an address on John Severe now. Uh, so. um, do we have any further questions? Commissioner Hill. Thank you. Um, would, um, would you remind me, please, um, Director Brooks, again, um, on, uh, on RB, let, let's see, low, low, low density residential is allowed. Help, help me with RB again, please. Certainly, let me pull it up here. Our, RB is a general residential zone it allows a, a number of different uses. Uh, of course, uh, single family homes are allowed, but also garage apartments, mobile homes, and multi-dwelling structures or developments, provided that the density shall be less than 12 dwelling units per acre. Um, you can go higher than that, but it requires a use on review. All right, so. <clears throat> and, um, Sir, you said that you you owned you already owned what what pieces the surrounding lot right it? behind it. I don't know if they show that on the map or not. There, the it should the, be. It was measured out on the. I see. That's a long triangle yeah. going mm -hmm. the other way. All that's right. correct. I see. All right. Um, goodness, is that and that's a lot, also. <laughs> yeah, there's a house on that lot. The other place that's there behind it, which I'm trying to purchase to make it look nicer, is actually on, on over on me, but it was yeah. grandfathered in. Uh, but it's only a couple of feet, but still it was. Yeah. I, pre I appreciate what your, uh, what your efforts are. But I, I do kind of have to agree with Mr. Brown, though, that to look at... Um, a, a series of, of condos because there actually is nothing around it at all that is that looks any anything it's got uh, like it 470 feet I believe front 220 on the far back side let me look and see thank you okay hold on a minute Thank you. Um, Commissioner Thompson. Um, Director Brooks, maybe you could, uh, a little clarification, because I'm looking at the matrix here, and I'm, I'm familiar with most of them, but RAE, what was, how does that differ from, like, low-density residential? Is that like a gated community, or was? No, it's not a gated community here. We, we rarely ever see RAE. Um, requests. It's exclusive residential zone is its title. Um, again, houses are permitted uh, here. There's what will be different is the air, um, regulations associated with like dimensional standards. Um, okay. Let me find this. Okay, I, I was just curious. I didn't. I wasn't sure because obviously it in low density residential or directly related um, to what yeah. it is. Yes, and maybe I could just provide additional clarification. Because of when this application came in, we were not looking at um, what was permitted in that place type because the place oh. types weren't approved yet. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. That so makes this, sense. this hadn't come into play yet. Gotcha. Okay. All the surrounding property, those lots, all the lots, they, I mean, they can do what, uh, what I am asking for. It's not like it's something they can't do. It's just this lot can't yet. But 13 of the 14 surrounding lots can. The other person has not applied for it. But all the other lots in that whole area can do what I'm asking for. It's not like um, it's uh, all those lots. See the RB zoning all the way on the cross and all the way down the side mm -hmm. and skip that one lot all the way down. Seven more yeah. lots. Every one of them. Um, on the far side. I think I think I understand uh, Commissioner Frazier's concern a little bit with because we were already talking about John Sevier Highway and having it because it looks currently like it has an access point to John Sevier. Um, so you're having more access points in and out. But um, from a safety perspective, Director um, Snowden, you can you may correct me if I'm wrong, but. 
from a safety perspective, um, transportation, I would, would it not make more sense to have the only access point on the Abner Cruise to where they have to go to West Norton to, to access the main, the main corridor instead of just, I guess the technical term would be willy nilly just get on John Severe Highway? Yeah, I mean, typically you're better off having access on the, the lesser street just because there's less opportunity for conflict there. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's, there are huge signs that says no trucks on that road because it's so narrow. Uh, that's why we use the entrance off of John Severe to do things. I mean, the trees were blown over. They looked like it looked awful. So we had to clear it out, and we could not use that road. I mean, it wasn't room. So that's why we got permission at that time through the uh, Department, of Department of Commerce to do that. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, I'll turn it over to District Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I, I move for approval of this request, and, and I want to explain to, the, to my colleagues why. Uh, first of all, I've already... Uh, mentioned that there is a distinction between the north side of John Sevier in the minds of my constituents versus the south side. And, and uh, I hope all of you all took the time to read the letter circulated to County Commissioners by Gayla Guignard, who was, I saw her earlier, I don't, I don't see her. Uh, She's yeah, there, there the she is, yeah. Um, and if, if you're curious to, to know more about that distinction, I would encourage her to approach the, uh, the, the uh, lectern and, and speak. But uh, there's, there's that issue. And, and actually, until just a few months ago, that was the, the boundary for the growth uh, plan, I believe, was John Sevier. So there's that. But also... Uh, for the same reason that I oppose placing a high density uh, subdivision in the middle of uh, a bunch of agricultural land, this is like the flip side. Uh, Mr. Roten is seeking to become consistent with the rest of the zoning around his parcel. And, and on top of that, if you drive down John Sevier, you will see the dilapidated house that he is going to seek to uh, tear down he's going to put a screen all the way across his uh, his property is that correct mr roden yep. yes and it's going to be attractive and john severe highway is of course a, a scenic highway so uh for all these and it's only he's talking about seven units per acre this is not a hundred this is not 200 it's not 50 it's seven so well well it, yes, uh, Commissioner Jay, it, it's up to 12 under RB, but uh, Mr. Roten has already stated that he has no intention of uh, building at that level of density. Is that correct, Mr. Roten? I, I don't have any intentions. It yeah. won't do so, 12. It can't hold 12, I don't think. Yeah. So for that, for that reason, I do move for approval of this particular item. Second. Okay. Yeah, hold on one second. So we have a motion... Are you setting a density on this too? Just the same. Uh, Commissioner or Director Brooks, I think will back me up. RB does not have a specific density that you set. It's no, just has to be set by this commission when it's a, whenever that is approved. Well, PR would be the case, but our RB does not have a does not have a density that you said. Um, Whatever set by this body. Okay. Commissioner Fox, do you, are, are you setting a, a number? You're not setting a number. But I did want to ask, did you want to um, add the extension of the um, condition um, number one to the type B landscape. Do you want to put that in your motion also yeah. for the, okay, Chair, I just want yes. to make sure you get your condition in Thank there. Thank you, yes. Okay, yes, all right. Do. So we have a motion on the floor for approval by Commissioner Fox and a second by Commissioner Lee uh, with the condition added of type B landscape boundary. All in favor, aye. Thank you, discussion. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Thompson. Go ahead. Um, that, well, you answered one of my questions, um, Madam Chair. Yeah, he was uh, I was going to ask you if you wanted to make sure that condition was in there. Um, and the applicant, you, you, 
are basically self-imposing. You're not planning to go past seven units an acre, correct? I'm saying I'm not going to go 11 or 12 units an acre. I mean, you might put four or five. There's a, there's a section, if you look on that map, there's a road that comes up through there. Mm -hmm. There's a section on the right-hand side. It's, a, I'm sorry, it was 170 feet. And there may be a room for a couple if that's needed. Gotcha, okay. To make it, I mean, to make it look right. Sure, okay. And so my, my concern, um, and in, in the past we, we've seen this, so, and, and Director Brooks, you correct me if I'm wrong, but RB is up to 12, and there is, it's just up to 12, correct? That's correct. Okay. And so let's say if, obviously, you have your intention and your plans and, and things like that. So if something were to happen, these are your intentions today. Um, life happens, things happen. Um, if for some reason you weren't able to complete your project and it changed hands, the zoning stays. And so then it is still up to 12. Although your intentions weren't to go past seven, I maybe agree. eight, um, the zoning would still allow for up to 12. Yeah. Um, so if that be the case, um, if Commissioner Fox doesn't have any objections, I would like to make a substitute motion uh, for PR up to seven with the same condition that uh, Commissioner Fox put in before. I would like to get more than seven because I told you I may use a couple more on that one side. That would be up to nine, plus I'm tearing a house and everything else on the other side. Depends on what it looks like. I mean, I didn't know we were going to have a density level on it. I didn't think it had one. But anyway. Director Moyers. Well, I just wanted to ask Commissioner or, or Director Brooks, when this came before the Planning Commission, was PR considered by the Planning Commission? I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, okay. It's been a number of months, and I don't recall that the Planning Commission discussed plan residential. No. Mm -hmm. the, the Commission would have to consider whether or not this is a substantial enough change that it would need to be sent back to the, to the Planning Commission. You're talking about a completely different zone. Um, that has well, different requirements. Sure. And so it gets to the point of being a major change that might, gotcha. that we might okay. have to refer back to the Planning Commission. I would like to withdraw my motion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Commissioner Jackson. Yes, I have a question for Commissioner Fox. Um, you know, one of my concerns would be having 12 potential driveways emptying out onto uh, John Sevier Highway. Would you be okay amending this? to restrict access only onto the side road, Abner Cruz Road. I don't object to that. The problem is during the construction phase, uh, I think Mr. Roten's concern is that he can't get heavy machinery down Abner Cruz in order to engage in construction. And is that right, Mr. Roten? That's correct. But you as far as access, you know, I just don't want driveways. I, I would think the driveways are best accessing Abner C Cruz Road mm -hmm. only. I would accept that uh, condition. If, if uh, somebody wants to make a motion. Yeah, I make a motion to restrict access to Abner Cruz Road. But I've got two of them, so you don't. We haven't both of them. There's a joint easement on that far right side. Okay, it's 470 feet up. To that house. See that easement there, that's T dot easement. There's one there now, if you and there's also one on the far right side with the trailer. And it is my property goes beyond the road of the easement. We have signed a mutual um well that's recorded. Let's see if I got a copy of what it says. Um a mutual agreement that we can uh, both use that easement from TDOT if needed. I mean, he's got a mobile home. He gets down to another mobile motor home. Uh, the, Commissioner Fox? You said driveways for as individual driveways. That would be great. I have no intention. You don't want car. But the way it's laid out to be, in my mind, so it comes in on one, a road goes all the way across the front, a paved drive, 20-foot drive, 
and to build houses off that drive with a driveway into it. So they're not going to have the individual drives, but they can all go. If it's rushed one way, they can go another direction. I mean, it's going to have an entrance off of uh, John's Real Highway, and, and if it's busy, they'll go the other direction. I, I just don't see, I think it's a huge safety concern with 70 mm -hmm. mile an hour traffic coming down the highway, mm -hmm. emptying this many subdivisions and little streets out into the road. I think that a better access is accessing Abner Cruz that you can then take down to Dick Ford Road and access John Sevier. But you need an emergency access because you can't get trees or any kind of heavy equipment down either of those roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't get them there. Construction route. You, you would have. A, you could also have a construction access. You could ask for a permit for a construction access okay. from. Uh, I mean, the other. I guess that's what I got actually. Yeah. So, make sure I get this correct. I'm. I want to. Um, I am amending Commissioner Fox's motion to restrict access to Abner Cruz Road. Correct. Do I have a second? Second. Who was that? All right, and then Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Director Snowden, does, uh, does TDOT have something to do with the issuance of permits to uh, be able to exit directly or access directly onto John Spear? Yeah, Mr. Roten would need a, a, an entrance permit for any access, whether it be a public road, private road, or a private driveway onto John Sevier Highway. And it looks like, and he's kind of alluded to this, he has a very narrow frontage for this parcel to Abner Cruz. So it, it, he would almost have to assemble those two parcels to allow for that access to be uh, for all those potential units onto Abner Cruz, yes. All right, and Madam Chair, I do have a comment. Uh, I, I recognize the concerns that uh, my colleagues have about John Sevier. There are a number of parcels along this stretch that already have direct access to John Sevier Highway. So he, he would not be asking for anything that has not, not already been granted to uh, other uh, property owners uh, through there. There's at least, I think there's two. But Mr. Roten, have you... Have you already uh, obtained permission from TDOT to exit Use back and road. forth? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it was well, it was set there when it was put in, just like all those roads. Every lot has got the easement off of the main highway. I think they had to, and that's why the lot up there that where that trailer sits has got one as well. It's just that my line goes up on his line. It's part of it. Uh, Yeah, I Is see it up it. there? Right. Can we scroll that down? Thank you. One access, 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 access. Okay. These were set when the highway was put in there in the 60s. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Commissioner Thompson, do you have a question? Yeah, I did. Uh, it's for uh, Director Snowden and, and also a general comment. Because yeah. obviously the, these access points were, were intended for a single home, um, not seven, eight units right. for uh, and per, per acre. Actually. So there's, there's multiple cars coming from this access. So obviously it'd be nice to have, it'd be safer for everyone involved um, to have them reach the secondary road to access the primary instead of just directly onto it. Um, but as far as construction, because obviously Abner, Abner Cruz is a small road, um, Dr. Snowden, can it, can it be uh, set up to where um, they have construction access, but then before they get their final inspection or whatever, that those access points are, are closed permanently? Yes, and I think, let me look. I was going to look. Mr. Roten's referring to that street, that truck sign. I think we have a, it's not a prohibited truck. It's just a, I think it's, a lot of these roads, we have a lot of problems with GPS leading truck 
mm -hmm. down roads that they shouldn't be. So we're just warning and advising people uh, or trucks that they that those, those aren't appropriate roads for them. However, for construction traffic and things that have to occur to develop a piece of property, we certainly pro, you know provide for that access. So yes, okay. we, we would allow that access. Okay. Uh, well, Commissioner Jackson. Yeah, I just want to respond Madam to Chair Commissioner. If I could ask the law we, director one question we, here regarding. We've got. <laughs> Commissioner regarding Jackson has the, the floor. Accesses. Commissioner Jackson has the floor right now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to respond to Commissioner Fox, I understand that there are other access points, but I think we need to limit future access points because every access point is a potential, you know, dangerous area and I don't I think that this is a perfect area for if you had dense townhomes they would just line Abner Cruz and each one would potentially have its driveway or a, or a shared driveway onto Abner Cruz um, I think it's a reasonable request okay um, Commissioner Frazier thank you madam chair I had a question for mr. Roten is it Roten, Roten, Roten? yes ma'am um, you stated that you own the parcels to the west. Why did you Why did you only bring one parcel forward for consideration? Why didn't you combine I the parcels? I didn't have it surveyed enough at the time to bring them in. They were separated because that house was sitting on it. That would make our job a lot easier. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping you don't <laughs> have to go through this again because they said they could handle it through the BZA when I did that. Well, that is a concern. That's um, what they told me, so I'm hoping they can. That they would do, do that. Director a, Brooks, can you respond to that? I'm not aware that our staff um, provided that type of advice. I don't know I don't where that so. would have been generated from. No. It's a small town. So does lot. that mean that we will be seeing the other parcel come before us? I don't and, think And why so. could we not postpone this and then I, I allow him to I come back so. with all parcels for consideration? That would make more sense to me. Well, I, I, according to them, that's what they told me to do. That's what they said that you need to go through with this zoning now because it could change and this can be done through the other thing. I said, is that correct? She said, yes, or they said yes, and that's what I did. I, I don't know that they got, I find out. To be honest with you, I've got two or three different things. And for us, this letter right here, it, it's, it's, the address is, what does that say to y'all? This is actually just a temporary address. It's not a, a, a final address, and this would change based on the use of the property. It's just a temporary. Well, okay. But it was given to the property. Uh, easement, right? I'm post it is just, just a temporary address, so you could. Madam Chairperson, let me make a comment regarding the access. This will clear it up. For just one, just one minute, because you've already had your time to speak, sir. This is important. The access that were granted by the state when the highway is put in cannot be taken away. This body cannot take away those accesses that were granted by the state. So be guarded. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Frazier, did you? I was going to offer a substitute motion to postpone for 30 days um, so that both parcels could be brought together if... I if will the second that. So, motion to postpone for 30 days. Oh, my gosh. Motion by my Frazier, second uh, by Oster, Commissioner Jackson. Uh, before we go on to the vote, just to clarify something, Mr. Moyers, to your comment, or to the gentleman's comment in the audience on restricting access only to Admiral Cruz, is, is that correct? Can you opine to that? Well, we're, we're getting fairly far in the weeds with conditions on, on zoning, which um, if mm -hmm. Mr. Commissioner Brown is correct okay. that the state grants those and they can't be taken away, but this commission, if it chooses to, can make as a condition to the zoning that, that those accesses not be used for the development of the property. So I, I believe that your, your motion would be in order. So, um, that's all right. So, so everybody understands where we are. This is a substitute motion um, made by Commissioner Fraser, second by Commissioner Oster, to postpone for thirty days. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed. No. Okay. All all eyes and Commissioner Thompson was a no. No. Thompson. 
Oh, I'm Fox. I'm sorry. And the motion passes. Um, we are going to take a 10-minute break, and we will be back at 6.55. Knox County Zoning is back in session. Clerk, if you'll read the next item, please. Item number one, nine dash D dash 24 dash RZ is a request of Avera Lynn McDaniel for rezoning from A Agricultural to RA Low Density Residential. Property is located at 7509 Nichols Road, parcel ID 125016 in the 9th Commission District. Thank you, is the applicant present? The applicant, Ms. McDaniel. We can move her to the end of the agenda, Commissioner Fox, if that's okay with you, unless you've heard from her. I've not heard from her, Madam Chair. Okay, we'll move that to the end of the agenda. Uh, next item, please. Item number two, 9-0-24-RZ is a request of Homestead Land Holdings, LLC, for rezoning from A Agricultural to PR Planned Residential up to five dwelling units per acre. Property is located at 7514 Millertown Pike, parcel ID 050199 in the 8th Commission District. Thank you. Is the applicant present? If you'll come forward and give your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Thomas Krajewski, Homestead Land Holdings, 122 Perimeter Park Drive. Thank you. And um, I don't see any opposition signed up for this item. So, Director Brooks. Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the PR plan residential zone up to four dwelling units per acre because it's consistent with the Knox County Comprehensive Plan and change of conditions by a vote of 14 to 0. Thank you. And would you like to speak to your project, sir? Please, just Thank for a you. few minutes. Um, so this property that we're working on, it's off of uh, Millertown Pike. It's a, it's a col major collector, I believe that's correct, um, but, but a uh, major road uh, through uh, the east side of the city. Um, it's about three miles from a major commercial hub. Um, it has Walmart, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, some multifamily. Uh, also has the Amazon uh, Center that recently uh, came online and is now operational. Um, this is a, a smaller parcel. It's got an older home on it. Um, it's mostly uh, cleared with some woods in the back. Um, there's a couple of old ponds on this property. Um, they, they're hand dug uh, ponds that the seller confirmed were used as catfish ponds. Um, and uh, and um, uh, the property sits uh, right off of Millertown Pike. Uh, Millertown Pike doesn't have any uh, drainage system inside of the uh, road roadway or on the shoulders of the roadway. And so some of the drainage comes through this property. Um, we uh, had a geotechnical firm look into that uh, to make sure that that wasn't a stream. Um, it was not determined to be a stream. It was just road runoff that comes through the property. Um, that was sent off to TDEC. Uh, TDEC then reviewed all of the information and confirmed that it is just drainage uh, that comes through this property. Um, so our hope is, is that if we are uh, able to develop the site, you know, our stormwater system would have to catch all the water that's both on the property and coming through the property. So it would help treat some of that road runoff coming off Millertown. Um, the owner uh, is, a, is a widow um, who's not taking care of the property. She's in her 90s. And so we've been working with her and her uh, children uh, on their interest in, in selling the track. They actually approached us. Um, to, uh, to, to see if we'd be interested in purchasing it. Um, our plan would be uh, for single family residential development. Initially, we asked for planned residential, five units an acre, which is allowed in the rural conservation. Um, st staff, planning staff came back and recommended four units an acre because it was more in line with the character, and we agreed with that. Um, and so uh, the case was heard at planning um, and voted uh, on consent at four units an acre and uh, we would uh, be willing to accept four units an acre uh, for this property. Um, uh, let's see, otherwise, I just um, uh, respect, uh, respectfully ask for your consideration and happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. I'll open up the floor. Do any commissioners have any questions? Oh, no, she already read it. Yeah. I know, everybody's helping me. 
question. <laughs> Commissioner Frazier. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question to Director Brooks. When was the adjacent property to the west rezoned? Do you know? And what was the estimated traffic impact of that property? Fairly recently rezoned. And Do you know, Tom? 2023. Are you familiar at all? I was going to say it's... 2023? Okay. I was just going to confirm that it was it was recent within the last year or so. And do you do you recall what the traffic impact was? I don't recall offhand what the uh, number you know of vehicles it was um, that it created. Um, I do know that it fell under the threshold uh, for a major traffic study. However, we did work with county engineering on some road improvements. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we did do a traffic study. I, I, I apologize. I do think we did because we worked with county engineering on some road improvements in that area to Millertown Pike um, in uh, for the project adjacent to the parcel uh, that the zoning is requested on. Okay, thank you. Seeing no further questions, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Thompson. Um, the, um, do you have any uh, uh, intent of combining or adjoining uh, the two the two properties? Sure. At this time, we do not. Um, you, you know, the, the one project to the west, which is our project um, that you're referring to, mm -hmm. is already under construction. It's already been designed. It's been permitted. Um, and uh, the infrastructure is going in. Um, so at this point, it, it's really a, a standalone uh, project. Okay. So the, these two would be separate then? Yes. That's the plan uh, at this time. That's correct. Okay. Um, the um, now on in the um, in the report or summary it said there were uh, potential sinkholes and things like that. Um, had you all considered that in your density estimate too, or how were you? Um, I don't know. In, in some ways, we can't necessarily weigh the the concept plan that, that you have right now um, uh, versus the, the the zoning. But how did you all factor those in? Because I hadn't. Sure. And dug ponds and, and things like that. Yep. So, so um, uh, my understanding is that the the what's referenced to as sinkholes are, are actually ponds. They're pretty heavily overgrown at this point, so mm -hmm. it's hard to, hard to see what they are on the sure. uh, on the uh, topo maps. If you look at the topographic maps on KGIS, uh, you'll see that um, uh, you'll see it as uh, hatched um, circles, typically circles uh, that denotes a, a depression. Um, sometimes that could be a sinkhole, but sometimes that could also be a pond. Um, in, in this instance, this, they are both man-made ponds. In current aerials, they're kind of, one's harder to make out than the other. Uh, but there are no sinkholes uh, that we are aware of when we had our geotechnical firm out on site. It is just the two ponds. Um, and like I said, those are man-made, hand-dug um, catfish ponds, according to the seller, uh, with, with uh, you know, some man-made structures, control structures in there. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so as, but as far as, as sewer, as far as sewer is concerned, this would have to have to tie into your existing project because there is not sewer along Millertown, correct? That's correct. So there's no sewer currently, uh, fronting, uh, or parallel to Millertown Pike. Uh, there is sewer a little bit further to the east on Ellistown Road already. Mm -hmm. Um, when we worked on the site to the west, uh, we worked with uh, KUB and our engineers and determined to uh, that best to um, build a uh, sewer pump station and a force main. And so our company invested in the uh, public infrastructure, well, what will be donated as public infrastructure, um, to, uh, to provide sewer to this area of Millertown. And so when we designed that pump station, we designed it with some additional capacity working with uh, KUB. And so this would uh, utilize some of that additional capacity that's already in the design. Okay. Um, so I guess the question to Director Books would be, this, this does fall under the threshold as far as the traffic study and impact on the area, correct? For the size? Well, they haven't done their concept plan yet. So once they get to that point, <clears throat> we would assess that. But yes, I don't think that based on the number of, yeah, the size of the track. It's only okay. 13 acres. Um, I guess a few, a few of my concerns with, with this one. Um, topographically, I mean, it's uh, 
the one to the west of it is, is fairly flat in the front. Um, this one, not quite so much, but um, the, the zoning for this one, uh, particularly school zones, um, unlike, because I know you referenced there at, you know, Sam's, Walmart, uh, that area, um, which is a little bit further, you know, in, into Knoxville. Um, this one's a little bit further out where uh, everyone, all the subdivisions in that area are zoned for, for Ridd Elementary. This one is actually zoned for East Knox, um, which is five miles down the road on, on Millertown away from Knoxville. Um, just trying to figure out the, the traffic flow and, um, and then getting back over to Rutledge Pike um, if folks were going to go to, to work because let's just face it, most, a lot of folks don't send their kids to school on the bus. Um, they're, they're driving them to school. Um, so um, that's, that's one of my concerns. Uh, now, uh, to Director Snowden, um, are there any plans in the future for uh, road improvements for Millertown or Ellistown in that area? Or what, what could be done? Or what would be the threshold for uh, a need for like a turn lane or a road improvements for that area? Sure, Commissioner Thompson. Um, short answer, th there isn't any per se improvements uh, scheduled for Millertown. We do have a couple of signals that are going to be, one at, at Roberts Road and one at Mascot, or Mine Road, up on uh, Rutledge Pike. So there is some adjacent improvements there. Uh, we did install recently a four-way stop there at, um, at Harris Road uh, due to some issues that we've had. But as far as any, you know, plan that we have immediately to make any improvements, um, we don't have on Millertown. The warrant for the turn lanes would be based on the traffic study that they would provide based on the, the unit mm -hmm. threshold. And that's really just based on the opposing volume bus versus the through traffic. Uh, so I, it, typically, I was looking this, at, there's a traffic count station near Robin Ben Lane, which is really close to this location. Um, there, it shows about 3,000 cars a day. So typically you see about 10% of your daily, tra your 10% of the, the traffic of your daily is the peak hour, 10 to 15. So you'd be looking at about 300 trips in there in the, in the morning. Mm -hmm. So just doing some quick analysis. I, I don't foresee that a, that a left turn lane would be warranted here. Uh, just, but obviously the study would bear that out, but mm -hmm. based on that analysis, I, I wouldn't think that an auxiliary lane would be warranted. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't anticipate there would be, but, um, with the, with these being two separate, um, so it'd be two separate entrances, um, and there's, there's really that far down middle of town Pike, there's really nothing. The closest intersection is there at Ellistown. And there's a Dollar General and a little convenience store. It's, it's not even a gas station. Um, and so as far as putting um, development and density that far out with no, no commercial. So if you live there and you're wanting to go somewhere and get something done, um, you would have to travel um, to that East Town um, Mill Road area. Um, I'll, I'll leave it open to your suggestion. If anybody has any other questions, I'm, I guess I'm having a difficult time with this one. If anybody has any thoughts. Commissioner Jay. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Thompson. I, um, I, I think that there's, you know, when I look at the case study on this, it says that there's an estimated 30 students yield, um, and of course that gets split between East and, and eventually Holston, which is South, and uh, Gibbs, and so it spreads it out, um, and I, I don't think it, I don't think that has as big of an impact. Um, you know, this, this is interesting that Millertown is a, a corridor that uh, has a lot of development on, on the ends, and not as much in the middle, but you know, the ends, if you go past Dollar General, there's another neighborhood there. I don't know what that, that, that zoning looks incredibly dense um, and farther up. I mean, I, I don't have heart burn with this one. Um, you're close to a commercial corridor. It's a fairly flat piece of land. You've got a good road. Um, 
church across the street has a lot of capacity, you know, uh, that doesn't seem to call it. I was supposed to issue, you have a commercial node and another um, couple of churches up the road. I, I mean, it just, it seemed like a pretty straightforward uh, development. And given that you could, uh, how far did you say it was to the East Town Corridor? It's, it's approximately three miles I mean, the, to, to the East Town site, to the yeah. Amazon site and all the commercial that's there. And then the Dollar General is probably about Maybe a Dollar mile. Is probably like a half mile. Three, mile. Yeah, half mile down no. to the east. But given that within three miles you could go to work, you could go to school, you could go to shop and be home quickly, I, I'd say that there's a lot of places in town that would love to be within three miles. So this one doesn't give me heartburn at all. I, I think it seems pretty straightforward, but just my two cents. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the, the place type here is rural conservation. So the property within the rural conservation place type. Um, this zoning is partially related, and one of the three conditions did apply, and one of those is that the proposed zoning district is compatible with the current zoning of the adjacent sites. So the PR zoning is compatible, and um, so I, I have no problem with this one either. Commissioner Thompson. Um, no, and it's, you know, there, there were just a, you know, a couple of concerns. I mean, it's, and I'm not saying it necessarily caused me heartburn. It was just, uh, okay. I was, I was hoping that maybe they would be combined and connected um, and they, they would be one um, to where, you know, maybe one, a single entry, um, and then it was more cohesive and connected. Uh, that's, that's really, I guess, kind of what I was hoping for or, or thought that might, might be. So, so we, we can certainly look at that since the other side is under construction. Uh, it might be difficult to do at sure. this point just because of timing. Right. Um, but I'm happy to take a look at it. And back to um, uh, Mrs. Brooks' comment that, you know, with this being PR, we would go back through concept. And so during that time, we would work with engineering to uh, e either provide traffic letters or traffic studies, whatever might be warranted, whatever sure. level of engineering might be warranted. And then we would look at it. I mean, ultimately, when we build these communities, we want safety for residents of our communities as much as we do the the surrounding you know yeah. residents so sure we'll, we'll definitely look at that okay well and and you all i mean you all have a good reputation of, of doing good quality work too so Thanks. um thank you thank you um so commissioner thompson would you like to make a motion i would um i'd like to approve uh, per staff and uh, planning commission recommendation to uh for PR up to four dwelling units per acre. Second. Okay, we got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Thompson, a second by Commissioner Frazier. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Best select with your project, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Next item, please. Item number three, 9-J-24-RZ is a request of Nancy Cox for rezoning from A Agricultural to RA Low Density Residential, property located at 7757 High School Road, parcel ID 046239 in the 7th Commission District. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Hi. If you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Nancy Cox from 7757 High School Road in Powell. Thank you. And I don't think that I've got any opposition on the paper. So, Director Brooks, if you'll read the uh, report, please. Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the RA Low Density Residential Zone because it will bring zoning into compliance and is consistent with the surrounding development. Thank you. Ms. Cox, would you like to speak to your project? Um, I just really, I want to build behind that home. Um, I'm trying to get my family here from West Virginia, so I want to build a house for me in the back behind the one I bought. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. I will open up the floor to commissioners for any questions. Seeing none, I'll turn it over to District Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have no issue against this, so I'd make a motion, if, unless anybody has any questions. Motion to approve the low-density residential zone because it is... We'll bring it into compliance and is consistent consistent with the surrounding development. Second. Thank you. We've got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Lee, a second by Commissioner Frazier. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed. The ayes have it. Best of luck with your project and Thank having you your very family much. down. I appreciate Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Next item, please. Item number four. 9-N-24-RZ is a request of Blakely Dance Pavlis for rezoning from RB General Residential 
A, agricultural, and F, floodway, to R, A, low-density res residential, and F, floodway. Property is located at 5027, 5033, 5039, Crippen Road, parcel ID 039-006-008-009 in the 7th Commission District. Thank you. Please you state your name and address for the record, please. It's uh, Blake Pavlos, 5027 Crippen Road. Thank you, and I don't see any opposition written down, so Director Brooks... Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the RA Low Density Residential Zone because it's consistent with the Knox County Comprehensive Plan by a vote of 14 to 0. Thank you. Mr. Pavlos, would you like to speak to your project? Uh, sure. So I've, uh, I've actually since moved from this, this location, and the reason I'm rezoning is just to sell the property. So there's two duplexes on the property, and uh, I'm definitely not as seasoned as some of these other folks in here rezoning property. Um, but there wasn't enough density for these two dwellings on top of my residence in the back of the house or the back of the property. So that's basically the only reason for rezoning these so we can sell them off. Okay. Do I have any questions from any commissioners? Seeing none, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess, Director Brooks, are there other duplexes in this area? I don't know that off the top of my head. I'd had, I'm not sure that I could answer that question here in the meeting specifically. I could, I could look around here on the map, but okay. it's not an analysis that we did for this particular okay. request. So, Mr. Palvis, you're not going to build. You just want to... No. Okay. No. So, I uh, went through a divorce, and uh, some of y'all know how that is. <laughs> and uh, to sell this piece of property, the duplex sits on my current my, my old residence 5027 so it's 5027 Crippen Road 5027 unit A unit B would be one of the duplexes and then there's 5033 which is another duplex and I can't remember if it was 20,000 feet per dwelling correctly I can't remember the exact amount was it 20,000 square foot um, yes so there wasn't enough between my current or at the time my current residence mm -hmm. and the one duplex 5027 A and B because they sat on the same parcel. So after this zoning, I'm actually going to have to subdivide this piece of property to sell them separately. Um, honestly, just a real headache. But okay, nobody. I mean, I, I don't see this property being developed. I, I do have several other properties, so I understand property enough to tell you that you can't really develop it. There's a floodplain in the front. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Um. Do any commissioners have any questions? Commissioner on Durrett my does. Are okay. you okay with me taking yes. her? Okay, yes. thank you. Commissioner thank, Durrett. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. So basically what you're saying is you're, you're trying to do your due diligence that this was potentially grandfathered in and you're having to separate it and bring it up to compliance in order to be able to sell Absolutely. the duplex separately from your own property. Correct. Okay, thank, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, direct, uh, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion to approve the RA zone because it's consistent with the Knox Comprehensive Plan. Thank and you. And the floodway would be retained. Thank you. Second? Second. Mm -hmm. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Lee, a second by Commissioner Thompson. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. Have a good evening. Right. Next item, please. Number five has been deferred. Number six, eight-h-24-rz dash dash is a request of Michael Shadow for rezoning from A Agricultural to RA Low Density Residential. Property located at 9510 Daybreak Drive, parcel ID 104033 in the 6th Commission District. Thank you. If you'll read, uh, give your name and address for the record, please. Yep. I'm actually Mike's uh, business partner, Aaron Kuntz, 6624 Ridge Rock Lane, Knoxville. Thank you. And I don't see any... Um, opposition here. So, Director Brooks. Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the RA Low Density Residential with the condition that future lot access be accommodated via an easement to Ball Camp Pike. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your project, sir? Sure. Yeah, we uh, purchased this property back in June, a uh, distressed property, friend of a friend. Um, our plan was to uh, renovate the home. It was in pretty severe uh, damage, and so we have been uh, working through that over the last several months. 
Um, our plan was to subdivide the back half of that lot off, um, utilizing an easement for a driveway that actually sits uh, directly to the east of us um, that connects to Ball Camp Pike. And our plan was to utilize that so you had access to Ball Camp Pike. Um, and I believe in our planning commission meeting, we had the contingency of um, grabbing that, having that in hand before we would get any approval. We actually are now under contract for that piece of property as well. So um, we should be in compliance with that particular contingency, I believe. Great. Thank you. Do commissioners have any questions? Seeing none, I will turn it over to oh, Commissioner Hill. Thank you. Um, yes, I've uh, had several conversations with Mr. Shaddle and looked at the property, and um, also he sent me a preliminary um, concept plan that y'all are working on. I have no objections with this um, rezoning, and unless anyone has any other questions, I'd like to make a motion for the rezone from agriculture to RA low density residential. Got a motion by Commissioner Hill. Do I have a second? Second by Commissioner Durrett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Best of luck with your project, Thank sir. Thank you all so much. Have a good evening. Next item, please. Item number seven, nine dash K dash 24 dash RZ is a request of Stephan Clare for rezoning from PR planned residential up to 7.25 dwelling units per acre to CA general business. Property is located at zero Jim Jones Lane, parcel ID 076007 in the sixth commission district. Thank you. Hello. If you'll uh, state your name and address for the record. My name is Stephan Clare, uh, 7800 Senate Lane, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, and uh, that was the name and address. The only other thing I wanted to say is I could never be happier that I don't have a property on John Sevier tonight. To be honest with you. So, uh, good yeah, luck on that. Good. Um, that's a good thing. Yes, um, we don't have any opposition to this, so I would like to have Director Brooks read first. Please. Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the <clears throat> excuse me, CA General Commercial Zone because it's consistent with the development and changes in conditions in the area. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your project? Um, y yes, ma'am. Well, I uh, respectfully ask that uh, the commission consider approval uh, based upon the planning commission's recommendation and uh, what we're doing with the property. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any questions from commissioners? Seeing none, I will turn it over to uh, Commissioner Hill. Thank you. Um, this has been a journey for you. Yes, ma'am. I know that it has. Um, may I just, um, out of curiosity, inquire, are you still considering the... Um, uh, storage, uh, boat storage, and all facility there. Yes, ma'am. We're oh. still moving forward with uh, the. We're going to have a nice coffee shop on the front yeah, uh, there, yeah. fronting uh, Pellissippi, and then behind that, we're we're still planning on doing the outside storage for boats and okay. RVs. Okay. Um, I have no objection to this. I know you've talked to. Um, I believe you said you'd met with Commissioner Fraser on this. Also, um, I am going to ask a, a condition be added that you. Um, include a landscape buffer on the residential side Absolutely. of that property. Yes, ma'am. So um, including the condition I just mentioned, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve rezoning from PR um, to CA general business on this property. Second. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Hill and a second by Commissioner Frazier. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good, good evening. Luck. Next item, please. Okay. Item number eight was deferred. Item number nine, nine dash Q dash 24 dash RZ is a request of Gregory D for rezoning from A agricultural F floodway and TO technology <coughs> overlay to PR planned residential up to two dwelling units per acre. F floodway and TO technology overlay. Property is located at zero George Light Road, parcel ID 089122 in the sixth commission district. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Hi. If you'll give your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Gregory D. 5725 Ball Road. Thank you. And I don't see any opposition to this. Commissioner or Director Brooks, please. Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the PR plan residential zone up to 1.5 dwelling units per acre because it is consistent with the Knox County Comprehensive Plan and surrounding development. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your project, sir? I would not. Okay. There you go. Does anybody have any questions? Um, Commissioner Hill? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Commissioner Jay? 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like for you to talk about your project. Okay. Could you tell us what your uh, sure. what your plans are there, and, and knowing them, <clears throat> my concern is, um, well, just tell me what your plans are first. So the uh, the land as it exists now um, is partially zoned uh, PR, partially ag. It's kind of a weird piece. So we're trying to get it all PR, uh, and we went through um, TTCDA, and it was we could do one. We want to build three houses. Split it up, three lots. Uh, they'll each have their own driveway. Uh, they'll each be over a third of an acre. We're not going to get down into the Beaver Creek. The the lot sits. Uh, there's a majority of the lot sits down into the creek and steep down to the creek. Uh, it's unbuildable. So yeah, those are rather have, steep lots. We're going to be up on the road. So okay. Um, it, it's my under, I wasn't able to get by, by there the other day. Have you already started grading and clearing? No grading. Uh, we we cleared some of the uh, the lot closer to Solway just so the surveyors could get in and actually mark stuff. So it's mostly undergrowth, some old trash, and yeah. So we've we've started cutting, but okay. not clearing. Well, with, it, this doesn't have to do with the approval of the zoning and what you're trying to do. But while I have a, a fine minute to you know, just put in a plug. Um, for all the work that this county is investing in Beaver Creek, when you cut and remove, cut and remove, do not push it down in the creek, sure. do not add more stuff to the creek. And in fact, this area is a pretty pretty large pinch point that we haven't yet cleared. Sure. And um, it's, a, it's an area that we will get to um, clearing more of, but um, I would hope that you would add, not add more to our work load, no, but be a good neighbor. We're pretty visible there, so if we are doing anything naughty, you'll see us. Okay, thank good you well. very much. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. Um, I noticed that you're on both sides of Solway. Oh, sorry, thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> you're welcome, go ahead. Um, I, I noticed you're on both sides of Solway Road. Will one of the units be on the other side of Solway Road? No, so actually that small triangle is not buildable. It, uh, I purchased this land from a gentleman that bought this just to get that small triangle. So he was not interested in the piece, the larger piece that I want to build on. Uh, my intention is that that will then be deeded to him because he owns the acreage down below that and he only has a, a joint easement to get to Solway right now. So the intention is that will go to him uh, at a later date, but he's got to get survey work done. It's there, the old roadway used to go through there. There's some messy stuff he's got to fix up. Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question or clarification for planning. Um, based on the um, hillside protection area, am I reading this correctly that only like 0.58 acres or of an acre is actually buildable? Does that sound correct to you, sir? I've not done the math. Uh, looking at it, I, I know that I can build houses without getting down into the bank that you guys are concerned about. And you said you wanted to build three? I'm just kidding. Are you, uh, Commissioner, are you referring to the, um, the slope analysis that was? Yes. Um, again, so this is just what we use as a guide. It doesn't necessarily mean they can't right. get into this area. Um, but the hillside protection area is approximately 1.454 acres. And so the recommended disturbance budget is 0.61. Again, that's a recommendation. All right, thank you. Thank you. Seeing no more questions, I'll turn this over to District Commissioner Hill. Thank you. <clears throat> you do see that the recommendation is from Planning Commission was 1.5 per acre. You are aware of that? Yes, ma'am. Um, so, um, <laughs> best you could do on that property would be two dwellings. With I total acreage. That right? With total acreage, it's right at three. The intention was always to put three houses on it. To the, start it out as it started out as three per acre. acre. They asked You're me if correct. I'd be willing to drop it to one and a half and still be allowed to do three because we're close enough. So I would still expect be honored with the three I was told you would be I, I did look at that incorrectly I'm just looking at how much floodplain and all there is there that's a tough piece of property but um, 
nevertheless, the um, are you going to be um, um, taking down the tree line to the north with the way that property backs up to an existing home there on George Light Road? Uh, yes, I mean, that would be my intention. If you look at the the contiguous properties that are to the north of us, north northeast, I mean, that's that's what they've done. They've separated lots and built houses and they have yards and we would expect to be able to do the same. Uh, right, I, w I was um, asking if, if you had any intention of keeping a landscape buffer there. It's, uh, it's mostly privet and vines and just overgrowth. So I, would, I wouldn't plan on putting, if it's a single family house I'm gonna build and it's a single family lot next to me, I, I wouldn't necessarily plan to put a buffer there now. Um, Commissioner Frazier, I know that this was one that you looked at in your um, in your planning um, meeting, and I was thinking I had read some notes regarding perhaps having a buffer there. Was that something that was discussed in your um, TPO meeting? Those were in the actual, you probably read those in the public comments that were attached to the case file because right. I have the same notes that some had asked for a landscape screen or something on that, on the, the property line that is adjacent to existing residential. But to his point, if he's going to add additional residential lots, each lot is going to be landscaped. Yeah. Right. So that probably would not be necessary in this case. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to go ahead then and make a motion that we um, <clears throat> approve the rezoning from agricultural um, F and TO to PR plan residential at 1.5 dwelling uses per acre. <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Hill and a second by Commissioner Jay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Best of luck with your project, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Item number 10, 9-L-24-RZ dash 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 is a request of Masana Investments LLC for rezoning from PR planned residential up to three dwelling units per acre to PR planned residential up to six dwelling units per acre. Property is located at 1413 Tipton Station Road, parcel ID 137053 in the 9th Commission District. Thank you. Is applicant present? Name and address for the record, please. Yeah, Scott Davis, P.O. Box 11315, Knoxville 37939. And it's the first opportunity I've had to come before the new commission. Congratulations or, or condolences based on <laughs> what's going on tonight. But appreciate your all service. Um, as you're aware, this piece of property, both uh, MPC staff recommended six units an acre and MPC voted 14 0 for six units an acre. Property is currently zoned three units an acre at PR, and we are asking for we are not asking for a plan amendment. It fronts John Severe Highway, and we did try to reach out and make you know make contact with the Jesuit property owners, sent letters to them, and we agreed. The biggest thing we heard coming back that they did not want access to Tipton Station Road, and we agreed not to allow access to Tipton Station Road. And with our traffic impact analysis um, done, we will have two entrances there on John Severe to help spread out the, the traffic flow as per the um, traffic impact study. And the advanced docks plan has this in the plan growth area with traditional neighborhood place type. All this is new to me. I've been, I'm an old guy. I don't learn as fast as I used to. So all this is new to me. So the place type, as I understand, is in the traditional neighborhood, which does allow for mixed use. And so, I respect for your request that y'all approve as per MPC staff recommendation and as per MPC's vote of 14 to zero. Thank you, Mr. Davis. We actually have two um, in opposition of this, so we will give them an opportunity. The first person is Mr. Thompson. Nope, you don't wanna speak, okay? And um, Mr. Geisel. Okay, I was hoping I was going to pronounce that right. I know what it's like. I need to get Ms. Brooks's um, on the record first, and then um, we will get started with you. 
Planning Commission recommends that County Commission approve the PR plan residential zone up to six dwelling units per acre because it is consistent with the Knox County Comprehensive Plan and due to the change in conditions in the area subject to the one condition noted in the staff report and the additional condition that access to the subdivision only be allowed via Governor John Sevier Highway with the exception of five individual single family home driveways accessing Tipton Station Road. Thank you. Now, sir, if you'll give your name and address for the record, please. I'm Bill Geisel, 1416 Tipton Station Road. Okay, and, and you have three minutes to address commission. Three. Uh, five. I'm sorry, that okay. should be a five. There we go. <laughs> sorry about that. It's been a no long problem. night. No Thank you. <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of the South Doyle Neighborhood Association, a South Knox County group focused on issues that we think affect the well-being of the community. And I want to start right away by just saying that we support growth that is appropriate to the community. Um, for example, we followed the rezoning that for this particular property that didn't happen very long ago from agricultural uh, to um, PR3. And uh, that was a significant increase itself for a planned senior living center. And we did not object to that. But our membership, you should know, has voted unanimously to object to the current request to further rezone 1413 from PR3 to PR6. And that's on the basis that it would create an isolated island of density drastically affecting and totally inconsistent with the surrounding Tipton Station Marble Springs area. It would clearly be contrary to the Knox County Comprehensive Land Use and Transportation Plan that states that it is to ensure that development is sensitive to existing community character. And here are some reasons why we feel this way. I want to share them with you. It's a unique neighborhood with a distinct rural and historic character and very low density surrounded on three sides by agricultural zoned land. Let me mention those. On the south side of 1413 along Tipton Station Road, Directly across the street is my property, so probably no one able to speak to this more directly than I am. Um, this area is a winding, hilly, wooded, two-lane, double yellow road with little or no shoulder. And from this stretch of Tipton Station Road, um, further south all the way to the county line, almost all the land is zoned agricultural. Then on your east, about 400 feet to the east, is Winkle Lane, and this is just a short, little, narrow, almost a single lane road, and uh, almost all the land, or, and on, the, um, on both sides of that um, laneway, uh, it's all zoned agricultural. Then if you go to the west, about 1,000 feet, uh, then the land between 1413 and Newbert Springs, you have Newbert Springs Road, it's all uh, uh, zoned either agricultural or historic overlay. And that's interesting because historic overlay zoning designates areas of, quote, sufficient historical and cultural significance to warrant public protection. And this applies to the Marble Springs historic site. And it borders on Newbert Springs, and it's the 34-acre John Severe Homestead. And uh, of course, as you know, receives thousands of visitors each year. And this area, including 1413, are the heart of the rural and historic character of this specific community along uh, uh, Tipton Station in sharp contrast to the much more developed areas further to the east, some of which you talked about tonight, and further west, which you've rezoned and, and agreed to some significant um, subdivision planning further to the west. The area's rural character is noted by the 2020 Knox County Greenway Corridor Study as being the preferred route of the John Sphere Highway Greenway connection to Marble Springs, and that is planned to go exactly along this stretch of Tipton Station Road. And um, it's interesting to note that the Planning Commission's 2020 previous approval of the development plan for the previous uh, owner, or the current owner, I guess, um, uh, recognized the right of way of uh, Tipton Station Road to accommodate the Greenway, and that was part of the stipulation there, and with no vehicle access from Tipton Station Road. And it's probably, I have no better place to say it, it makes it even more significant to me that the Planning Commission and what they approved said 
that there would only be access to this from Governor John Severe Highway, and then against their own statement, at the very end of their uh, approval, said, oh, by the way, do you need more um, lane, uh, driveways off Tipton Station Road? And he said, yeah, two or maybe five. Okay, we'll give you five. It's absolutely inconsistent with what they had already said. So that's of grave concern to us as well, even though they're supposed to be private dwellings, but that's not part of the plan that's being stated here. So one of the, secondly, one of the more significant issues is the matter surfaced already tonight about how to consider the development density to the north on the opposite side of Governor John Severe Highway. We'd like to make a case that those areas across the highway and John Severe uh, would be not considered um, part of this neighborhood. So Governor John Severe, as you know, as we said. Sorry, if you can wrap up, we're, at, we're five minutes, is That's up. five minutes? Yeah. I'm in trouble. I know. <laughs> so the idea here is that Governor John Severe Highway uh, is a, a scenic uh, beauty and routes of significant historical significance, but with the amount of traffic that's there, has already been stated tonight, um, it, it creates this major boundary, which already in other contexts have been stated as creating a boundary between neighborhoods. And it's absolutely different than what is just to the south. This doesn't even allow for opportunity to mention the traffic uh, hazards that we already encounter on, uh, on Tipton Station Road. So thank you, thank sir. you very much. I appreciate much. Your, your time. Thank you. Mr. Davis, you may rebuttal. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And as I mentioned, we, we agreed not to come off of Tipton Station. And if we, if there was any driveways coming off of the station, individual driveways that would not be, that would not exceed five. We agreed to that with MPC. So in the subdivision itself would not come on to Tipton Station Road. So there would not be traffic there. And, and directly across John Severe Highway, uh, that's developed. I mean, that's approved at eight units an acre directly across the street. And we're asking for six. I think in this place type and in the plan growth, you could ask up to 12. We're asking for six. And there's a reason why this is in the plan growth. There's a reason why this is in the traditional neighborhood. Um, it's, it's a very flat piece of property. We don't have any hillside issues to deal with. Um, and there's the reason why when we went through all the advanced stocks, there were certain properties such as this that were set aside for, for potential future growth and a little bit higher density. So again, I respect for request. You guys approve as per um, MPC's recommendation or vote of a 14 to zero. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions from commissioners? Question. Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question. Uh, Mr. Davis, why do you need the five accesses on Tipton Station? We, we don't. I just, uh, there was just to give comfort to the neighbors to say, look, we agree that Tipton Station doesn't need to have additional traffic coming onto state, Tipton Station at that point because uh, of because the curvatures in the road. And so to make sure that we would not exceed that. And I don't know if we need, there's one house that's currently there. Uh, we haven't decided yet whether to keep that house or not. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to come to you all and say, we're not going to have a single access on Tipton Station and then we opted to keep that house and use that for access. So I could tell you today, we do not need more than one potential driveway on Tipton Station Road, and I would agree to that. Okay. And then Mr. Thompson, did you, did you want to respond at all? You did sign up for public forum. Is there, are, do you have, because you, I don't know if all of commission saw Mr. Thompson <coughs> sent in a really um, helpful and informative, uh, some notes that he sent in that I found very helpful, especially um, in considering thank the- Thank you, Commissioner Fraser. Yes. It's Bob you... Thompson, uh, Knox County. Um, we already laid, a, our organization did lay a 10 page memo on you and I, I apologize for the length, but uh, I think the factual considerations had to be there particularly for the new commissioners um, so I would, I would just refer you to that. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we do have, we do, 
Commissioner Brooks. I, I do want to point out also uh, Marble Springs is an integral part of our community. And as the memo points out, uh, several of our members, including Commissioner Brown, have been on the board um, of the, the organization that has day-to-day -day operations. Uh, former Commissioner Carson Daly was on the board. Um, uh, Mark Mugford, who's, who's the president of our organization, was formerly on the board. All of us have picked up trash along Tipton Station Road in this area. It, it's a community thing. It's a, it is a special community. Uh, Commissioner Brown has asked for a show of hands of people here who are in support of, of, this, of our opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do commissioners have any questions? Seeing none, I will turn this over to District Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, can, I, can I say one thing or sit out against the I, I'm going to yield to uh, Ms. Greenyard, if I may, Madam Chair. Okay. If you can give your name and address, please, for the record. Thank you. Uh, I'm Gayla Gennard. I'm at 7632 Sane Lane in South Knoxville, within about a quarter of a mile of this property. So um, we are very clear that there's going to be development in this part of South Knox County. Again, we are not against development. We are clearly against overdevelopment. We went around and spoke to about 100 neighbors most of whom still thought this property was going to become a nursing home. And when we looked at the sign, which was on John Severe for this Tipton Station property, which is a good place to have it because there's a lot more traffic there right now, um, there was still the, the Freedom Nursing Home sign on one end and quite far down, I think at the very edge of the property, we saw the small rezoning sign. And so many of our neighbors are not on Facebook, and they don't come to these meetings. And we asked people to at least write. And some were afraid to do that. They said, we've tried in the past to complain, and people won't listen to us. So people feel they have no voice. I've lived in Knoxville, Tennessee three times. I began in 1987 when I got my master's degree at the University of Tennessee. We came back here to live. This is where my husband's family came in the late 1800s from Switzerland along with 35 other families who were against the religious persecution they were experiencing. And they said, this is a very beautiful place to live and very similar to the Jura Mountains of, of um, Switzerland. And what I want to say is that people have the right to breathe and to be healthy and to have an opinion and to live without fear. And unfortunately, and I was surprised, many of our neighbors were not comfortable even writing in because they were worried their last name would be shown. And they certainly were not comfortable with coming to this meeting. And I'm sorry to tell you, but that's just the truth. We decided to live in South Knoxville because we came with horses. Um, that has since changed, but we wanted to live in the country and we think that's okay, that our people want to live at least somewhat in the country. If you approve the request for six per acre, it will change the, um, the living conditions. It will change things. And I ask that you not approve and that you just retain the zoning that was just asked for back in, in uh, 2020 to three per acre. Thank you. Someone will want to build there and that will be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think uh, my colleagues will recognize that uh, we received, I received what, 50 emails over the past few days and at least 30 of them were related to this project. I received phone calls. The, the community sentiment is um, strongly against this project. And uh, a part of the reason is that, as, as stated by Mr. Geisel earlier, they, the community believed this was addressed, and yet uh, here a new development is uh, proposed after the community al already thought it was addressed, and, and uh, that's just creating a lot of consternation. Um, but I move to deny this application. Sir, if I may speak. You, that's up to Madam Chair. Uh, you'll give your name and um, address for the record. 
Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Lauren Crawwinkle, and my address is uh, 7525 Widow French Lane, uh, a little further down Tipton Station. But uh, I did not come today intending to speak. But seeing the proceedings here, I believed that lending my voice might add some further context. People have talked about the Marble Springs community, the historic site, the home of the first governor of Tennessee, Governor John Sevier. I actually did some historical reenacting there as a child with my family. It was a very formative experience, I would say. And one of the things that makes that community so special, one of the things that makes that site so special is the rural character of the surrounding land. When you stand at that historic site and you look around, most of the scenery you see, you can imagine that this is the way that it must have looked when the governor was living there. Adding a development that could spoil that character, it will take away from our cultural heritage. And I request that you listen to those voices who have spoken in opposition. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Mr. Davis, you've had a couple of extra ones come up for um, opposing. Do you want to add anything else? I appreciate it, Madam Chair. Um, you know, primarily what we've, we've already discussed is that we're 1.5 miles from a commercial corridor. We're not asking for a plan amendment. We spent two years, and I don't know how much money and time, on the on the, the growth plan, or I guess advanced Knox plan. And through that process, there were certain parcels of land like this particular piece of property that were identified for traditional neighborhood in as part of the planned growth area. And I appreciate the folks that have come before, and it's, and it is, zoning's always an emotional issue, but this particular piece of property was identified through that whole process as a site because of its location, access to John Sevier, topography reasons, close to the corridor, all of those reasons is why it was put in as that place type and why it was part of the growth plan, the growth policy plan. So I res again respectfully request that y'all approve. It was voted 14-0 by MPC for a reason, because, and because of the place type and because it's part of the growth, policy, growth plan. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox to deny. Is there a second? Do we have any other questions? Commissioner Rawls? Um, I'd like to make another motion. A substitute? Substitute motion, Okay. Yes. Um, my motion and the reason why I'm making this motion is because the tenor of this meeting is that it's very nimble. It's not in my backyard, but we're always moving we're always growing as a county. And so I'm putting on the table that we make a motion to accept MPC's recommendation on this property. I have a substitute motion on the floor by Commissioner Rawls. Do I have a second? I have a second by Commissioner Durrett. Commissioner Jay? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, think there's, I think there's a place in the middle uh, I, uh, it's no, it's no secret that I often tend to take the big picture uh, approach to Knox County's issues. And at the end of the day, in, until somebody can show me otherwise, w we need inventory to be able to have housing that is affordable to allow people to to live a good and prosperous life. To to be able to um, have housing that our children can afford one day. Um, we have got to catch up with the growth and we've got to do it in a way that, um, and I do believe in the work that we did in uh, Advanced Knox to concentrate areas that are closer to, to major corridors does help keep our communities that are more rural, more rural. Um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge every day and it's a challenge in every part of this county. I think there's a compromise, so I'm gonna offer an amendment to the substitute motion. Um, and, and I would like to, I'm gonna, my amendment is to propose 
uh, five units an acre, which is the same density as a development just to the east and lower than across the street with the following conditions. No access at all to Tipton Station Road, keeping uh, the commitment for two entrances and access points on John Sevier Highway, which will help with traffic. Um, obviously, you'd have to keep the requirements for anything that requires John Sevier Highway, you know, buffers, and then adding a, uh, a Class B vegetation buffer along Tipton Station. That's my amendment. Okay, we have an amendment on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. And that was Commissioner Thompson. All right. Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to ask Mr. Geisel and Mr. Thompson about Commissioner Jay's amendment to the substitute motion. Point of order. There's only one state entrance off John Sevier Highway on this property, not two. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear from the two individuals who spoke regarding Commissioner Jay's amendment to the substitute motion, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, the property, I think Commissioner Jay was referring to Wells Creek at the east, which is zoned PR5, but if you do look at the map, it's more, I, by my examination, it was just under four per acre. Uh, if you look at the property to the, the next subdivision to the west, which is on the west side of Marble Springs, is only one to two, it's PR one to two. Um, so. Uh, our, our, our organization did not, we did not vote to compromise. I, of course, you have the power to do that. But if there is a compromise, to me, four would be most appropriate. Uh, may also point out, as far as the, the place type, uh, Mr. Mugford's memo did, while we understand we're not challenging the place type, but I, I do ask you to think about why was this small uh, traditional neighborhood place type put in this spot. And the only reason I can think of is because they were looking at the, the more dense properties across the street. But again, we've talked a lot, you know, ad nauseum about uh, John Sevier is a barrier. Uh, you know, if you look at this, if you look at this property, it's all really, it's part of the Tipton Station neighborhood. It's not John Sevier. Um, so again, my my position would be, can you can you do four? Can you can you work with four? And also, I again, I I would ask you to think about the traditional neighborhood place type here, whether it was really appropriate. And I would ask, do we know the the basis for that? Now we've we've talked about uh, the the public input that went into Advance Knox, and there was public input. You know, at the beginning they gave us the post-it notes. You know, and we. We said, well, of the three scenarios you, you, you offer, um, which does the public prefer? But that, you know, there was, I don't think there was any real opportunity for meaningful public input on the specifics of the place types that were, that were come up with, you know, as opposed to when we did sector plans, the public did have more specific opportunity for how the land was being used in their neighborhood. Uh, so, just going forward, I, I feel that that was, that's one pretty significant shortcoming in how the, the place types were designated for this area. Thank you. Do you have anything to add? I don't. I, I concur with his thoughts there. And the only other comment I would say is the original primary uh, entrance and exit um, from John Sevier was proposed at one. So I'm not sure what the two is, whether you intended it to be two at that point, um, but one was the original. But I certainly do appreciate the recognition of the necessity of limiting those driveways off of Tipton Station. Uh, Director Brooks, can you speak to the place type of traditional neighborhood here? Do you recall any of the considerations for that place type? 
I don't recall the specifics on, on this one, um, but I will say that there was an effort to identify opportunities for this place type throughout the county and looking at larger sites. So that this is a minimum of, it's a, I think it's a little over, it's almost 30 acres, so 27 acres. And so um, trying to identify where those opportunities might be to create more neighborhoods, more traditional type neighborhoods. And so in the, in the staff report, it also states that there are 1,600 average daily vehicle trips anticipated. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And at build out of six per unit, you're looking at approximately 165 lots. Okay, thank you. Mr. Davis, would you like to respond? Yes, ma'am, and I apologize. I, for clarification purposes, um, if the traffic impact analysis recommends the two entrances on John Sevier, we would. We're not, so we're not advocating that one way or the other. With the traffic impact study, if that's what they tell us we, we should do, then that's what we would do. That's purely based on the traffic impact analysis and what TDOT recommends to us. And, um, and uh, Commissioner Jay, I appreciate your your offer of if. And I, I would be willing to, for the for this body and to help the neighbors feel more comfortable what we're doing, I would agree to to that same five units an acre if that's amenable to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hill. I just had a comment um, <clears throat> on uh, Mr. Jay's, uh, I guess it's a substitute amendment. It's uh, an amendment to the I, substitute motion. Um, I, I appreciate that because you are eliminating Tipton Station Road and uh, Mr. Fox, one of the things I, I, we all got many, many of those emails and they most, most of them seem to be, have the concern for the Tipton Road, Tipton Station Road, you know, area. And I'm wondering if, 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 if there's no entry or access to that, if that wouldn't at least help to protect that area down there that they're so concerned about if everything has to flow out onto John Severe Highway. So that's that's just an observation. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Jay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I do just so I just want to repeat the amendment to the substitute motion is five units an acre, no access at all to Tipton Station Road, a class B vegetation buffer in, along the Tipton Road, uh, Tipton Station road um, side of the property, and then of course keeping all the requirements for setbacks and, and buffers for John Sevier Highway as outlined in the scenic corridor study. Um, I, I think that if we can find compromise here, we should. Um, neighbors are not super thrilled with me, but they're in a better spot. Developers not super thrilled with me because I just changed this project and added more cost, but we're in a better spot. And it's not perfect, but we've got to find a way to welcome people, let them live their lives, and build uh, opportunities for for everyone while also respecting the current residents. And so, um, with that, I'll I'll stick with that amendment, and I'll ask for my commission colleagues to support it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Rawls. I'd be willing to uh, amend my motion to accept. Uh, the terms that Commissioner Jay stated with no entry on Tipton Station, et cetera. Okay, so. thank you. Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, colleagues, to jump back in, buzz back in, as we say. Um, but I just had a quick question about the 2020 Planning Commission decision required a 20-foot right-of-way on Tipton Station. Is that also included in the considerations for, as a condition? Did I miss that? I know we've had a lot of Uh, I, my understanding, if I remember correctly, Commissioner, that that was part of the development plan that was submitted as part of, of that 2020 approval. It wasn't part of the rezoning, but I can double check here. But it's part Only, of the development plan. Right, and that's in reference to the 2020 Knox County Greenway plan that they had asked that the 20-foot right-of-way be maintained or protected for that plan Greenway to connect to Marble Springs. Am I correct? And so that's something that I yes, would like the 
the uh, sponsors of the motions to also consider. And I do want to recognize Ms. Gennard if she has a comment. The other two speakers had a minute, so I yield my time to you. Do you have a comment? Do you have something to add, Ms. Gennard? Thank you, Commissioner Frazier. Uh, I just want to say that um, the, the Neighborhood Association uh, basically gave us the voice. I, was, I did not plan to speak tonight. I knew I was going to be here to basically say they were comfortable with the original zoning. I will tell you, we can't ask them now. We sure would like to have the opportunity to go back to them and have another month um, to say, hey, this is what the developer has, developer has suggested. And the reason I bring this up is I think that they will feel like they lost. Um, sorry, it's just something people have to get used to. And when we heard that there might be five uh, driveways on Tipton Station, and we heard there might be six units per acre, that just, you know, really got us going. We have a little more information. I think people are reasonable, but I don't know what it would hurt to have another month to be able to come back. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis, do you want to add anything else? since we're giving everybody more time. And, and, and I don't know if we're going to learn any more in another month. We've agreed that we won't have any driveways coming off the tip station. We have agreed to reduce our requested density down to six, even though it was approved 14-0 by MPC. We've tried to do our best to be accommodating, and no matter what we offer and present tonight, we're not going to learn anything different between now and the next in 30 days. And so... Um, if it's the will of the, of the commission, I think what, you know, and again, I'm going to repeat what Commissioner Jay said. In these situations, we never can make everybody happy. We're never going to. And we've tried to be a, as accommodating as possible to try to help understand the neighborhood's con concerns and address those. And so I would respect the request. We vote on it this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, uh, I'm going to have to use this as an opportunity to uh, challenge this concept that all development is good all the time, okay? And uh, I believe, and this is a basis upon which I got elected, that county government ought to primarily serve the interests of those who are currently paying taxes, raising their children, wanting to live in a, uh, a peaceful, safe environment. Uh, and wanting to live in an environment that attracted them here in the first place. And if there is continued high-density development, that will cause there to be a permanent transformative effect that cannot be undone uh, in the South Knox community. And my constituents are trying to uh, maintain the character of their community, which is also another basis for uh, making uh, zoning decisions. And uh, <clears throat> so I don't think that it's proper to always be trying to accommodate some future person who wants to live here. Uh, to the extent that there is a housing crisis, uh, that housing crisis, it's not the job of South Knox County residents to give up their way of life to solve a housing crisis. Uh, through, uh, based upon problems that were created uh, through uh, and and also I question the uh, the studies that have led us to the point of concluding that there is a housing crisis housing more expensive than it should be but uh, we are actually on a demographic cliff uh, based upon more recent information that I don't think made its way into advanced Knox. And right now, young families are not raising children to the extent they were. And we could very well end up like Japan, where they have a glut of housing. So I want to get that out there. Um, all development, always, all the time, is not always good. Uh, and I appreciate the, the gesture of peace that uh, was uh, presented by Commissioner Jay, but... Uh, from what uh, the uh, representatives of the South Doyle Community Association are stating is even five is too much. So uh, I am asking my colleagues to uh, vote no on this measure. 
Thank you. Um, seeing no other comments, then we have an amendment on the floor um, for five dwelling units an acre with conditions. And we have a second. So all in favor? Aye. Okay. All opposed? No. <laughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Jackson. Yay. Commissioner Russell? No. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Lee? No. Commissioner Thompson? No. Commissioner Fox? No. Commissioner Jay? Aye. Commissioner Frazier? No. Commissioner Rawls? Yes. Commissioner Durrett? Aye. Commissioner Oster? Aye. So that motion fails um, with five yeses and six noes. No? no, the motion passes. Oh, it passes. I apologize. I'm sorry. The motion passes. Mr. Davis, good luck with your project. Thank you all for your time and your service. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead with the next one, please. All right, next item is item number 15 on page 5. It is 24-10-1-RZ. It is to initiate an application for rezoning from planned residential to agricultural. Property is located at 2814 Tipton Station Road, parcel ID 148049, part of... <coughs> Not sure, Director Moyers. How do we need? There's not an applicant, so do we just have Commissioner Fox start? Okay, so Commissioner Fox, since there's not an applicant, we'll start with you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to start off, I am uh, making sure that everyone understands we are not voting to rezone a parcel of property right now. That's not what this is. This is a resolution to begin the rezoning process. And uh, the reason I'm doing this among many that I've already stated and won't restate is right now there is a concern uh, that has been uh, presented to us by the uh, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation that this particular parcel of land needs uh, further investigation with regard to um, potentially toxic substances. This, used, this particular parcel used to be the storage facility for a company named Atlas Powder, which uh, provided dynamite and used this parcel as a storage facility when Chapman Highway was being widened to four lanes. And it's gone through an, uh, a couple hands over the years, that, that was back in 1955. Um, now this, I know there may, there, the last time when I presented this in September, there was some concern about could this body even uh, undertake such an endeavor? And it turns out, yes it can because of uh, uh, section 6.3 of the zoning code, but not only can it take place, it has taken place. And not only has it taken place, it's taken place with respect to this exact parcel. In 2002, this body, in, in a resolution that was initiated by the sitting uh, county commissioner at the time, Howard Pinkston, uh, took a, the property that was previously, previously zoned agricultural and then it was rezoned to industrial and this body uh, sent it back through the rezoning process and it eventually ended up back at agricultural. So it's a proper thing for this body to do to rezone. It's, in other words, it's lawful. Uh, it has been done before and it's been done to this very parcel. And we have good reason 
to, uh, um, to undertake this because of this concern with respect to the uh, toxic substances. Uh, and I know people say, well, we, we might get sued. We might get sued if we do this. We are already getting sued. We, this, the county is getting sued right now over this parcel based upon the zoning, that the zoning decision that took place in August. Uh, and my concern, though, in light of what has been revealed to me uh, with this letter that I circulated, what if, what if we did not pause for a minute and, and take a look or, or let let this investigation take place with respect to uh, TDEC. And it turns out in 10, I don't know, 10 years, that there was a problem with, with this site. And uh, there were le legal claims that grew out of problems that existed at this site. Well, who do you think would be on the hook? Who had the opportunity to say, you know what, we're not gonna approve this as a residential, uh, you know, a higher density residential use? Well, it would be the county. So this is the time right now before there's any kind of uh, um, vested interest, because there's not a vested interest yet, or any, any opportunity for uh, a claim of a regulatory taking. This is the time to put this case back through the zoning process to uh, give time for TDEC to investigate this. And uh, we can talk about whether or not the current zoning is proper. I will tell you that this is the parcel I mentioned earlier, uh, where it is completely out of character, uh, four units per acre is out of character with the rest of the community. Um, and in fact, the, pl the planning staff did not recommend four units per acre, it recommended two units per acre. Uh, and the the commission made a decision based, or there was an argument that, well, you know, just north about a mile away, you got this high density development along the corridor. So, so in, that, in that situation, there was a, an argument that, well, we got density along the corridor, so we should have density inside the interior and in agricultural land. So that's why I have a problem with saying, well, we're just gonna stick to the corridor because that hasn't been done in the past, like two months ago. Um, so I, uh, I am asking my colleagues to allow this investigation to take place and to send this back through the, uh, uh, the planning process. And I do want to say one other thing about this. Uh, this if, if this body were to rezone it to, back to agricultural, that is what's called a rational basis de decision. And it's, it's almost untouchable uh, if there is a, you know, a justifiable basis for making that decision. So the fact that there could be a lawsuit doesn't mean that it would be a winning lawsuit. And, and I would be happy to, def to defer to uh, Mr. Moyers about these questions. Mr. Moyers was actually the law director at the time that the rezoning took place previously. So I make a motion, by the way. <laughs> I, I make a motion to, uh, for this body to place a application with the Planning Commission to have this property rezoned to agricultural. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox and a second by Commissioner Lee. We have quite a few people signed up to speak on this, so I'm going to let them go ahead and speak. Um, on this, and the first one is Brock Saltzman. Hi, if you'll give your name and address for the record, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Barack Saltzman, Division President for DR Horton, 1434 Center Point Boulevard, Knoxville, Tennessee. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to address you. Three months ago, this legislative body voted 10-0 to approve the rezoning of this property to planned residential four dwelling units per acre from agricultural. This vote was a six month process, including hours of meetings with community members, county staff, county commission, engineers, and planning commission, along with an environmental study that showed no issues from dynamite storage on this site 
and that report has been shared with TDEC as well. In the last 90 days since this 10-0 approval, we have been working tirelessly to help introduce a new legislative tool, Residential Infrastructure Districts, to Knox County. This tool passed in the legislative uh, body of Tennessee this spring, and it is a tool that helps new residents pay for new infrastructure to support a safer and growth-ready Knox County. The first potential approval of a residential infrastructure district, along with a memorandum of understanding with Knox County Engineering, will be on upcoming commission agenda. This MOU pays for a roundabout replacing an unsafe intersection today, an intersection that isn't even on the next decade's capital funding plan. While we have been acting in good faith, this body is proposing to negate the zoning approval of the immediately former commission and reverse the productive agreement so far. This has the potential to create an un extremely uncertain business environment for the residential construction industry, a segment of our economy that needs investment if we are going to deliver the 20,000 homes we are short as a region. This action has the potential to create precedents that all zoning approvals within a year of a commissioner election could be reconsidered. I hope this body understands the implications this would have for housing prices, pushing housing pricing over half a million dollars. Yet another precedence would be the use of this rezoning tool to arbitrarily pick winner and loser parcels. What would stop a commission in five or 10 years to choose to up zone properties to increase property tax revenues against the property owner's wishes? I have recently heard of a story from a nearby jurisdiction of a family farm that was up zoned and hit with a $100,000 property tax bill. I fear the implications for our farmers and longtime residents who have owned their properties for decades. I, as a Knox County resident, truly hope this Pandora's box of changing zoning without the property owner's say is never opened here. In summary, from my perspective, this is a choice with two doors. Behind door A, voting down this resolution is the first win-win $3 million infrastructure investment outside of a community by a residential developer. Behind door B, voting to approve this resolution is the potential to set a scary precedence for our farmers and long-term residents, for our residential construction industry, and for the county as a whole. Please do not forget that the landowner of this property has been proven to be litigious in the last instance of county rezoning 22 years ago. The material damages of losing a current, fulfilled four plus million dollar contract is a lawsuit the landowner is likely to win, and I know I, as a Knox County resident, would rather see the county spend $4 million on infrastructure and schools than legal fees and litigation payout. Thank you for your time and consideration. I hope you choose to vote down this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Saltzman. Madam Chair, may I ask a question of Mr. Saltzman? Yes. Mr. Saltzman, the residential uh, uh, district uh, that you mentioned. Yes, that sir. involves Knox County actually uh, going ahead and providing infrastructure and bonding it out and then a payback of time uh, by the, the, those who purchased the lots. Is that correct? The, there's some nuance to it. So uh, the bond would actually be issued by the IDB uh, with uh, DR Horton being the one who then pays uh, the MOU with Knox County along with uh, sewer, uh, sewer and water capacity improvement with Knox Chapman. Okay, but uh, you're saying by the industrial board, development board. Would, would, would be the bond holder, okay. yes. Yeah, but well, but who would, be, who would be guaranteeing that bond? The residents of this community. It would actually be a second line. Um, okay, uh, it would be a second line item on the property tax bill. Uh, so it actually has to be paid with property tax. It would be an assessment fee on top of property tax for each of these homes. Right, and if there's a default on that bond, who would be paying for that bond? So there is a, uh, right now in the, the models we're using would be a year's worth of debt service that is actually a reserve that we would issue with the um, uh, net proceeds of the bond. And um, that would help balance the, any def potential defaults. Typically in our communities, we see 85% of our homeowners have a mortgage. So typically a mortgage company would have the escrow payments and make sure that the property tax and this assessment fee would be paid first 
because the mortgage is actually the third lien on the property, sir. Okay. Would D.R. Horton pay the defaulted bond if there was a default? So we would have the reserve, we would put aside the one year reserve account and there is a low likelihood of uh, default past that by any means. And okay, so this happens hundreds of times a year across the country and other states, sir. And there has not been a default to this level. Okay, but Knox County would have to pay if it defaulted, correct? No, sir, the property owners would have their property re repossessed by the county uh, in order to pay anything that would need to happen, just like any other property tax bill that's not paid. There's actually a, a training that I believe Commissioner Fraser is setting up with uh, the bonding attorney of uh, Knox County to speak more details. I'm not a lawyer. I didn't pass the legislation, so I can't give you all the nuance to it, but uh, everything I've been assured uh, by uh, our council and uh, in, in the Knox County Council as well does not have Knox County on the hook for this because of the reserve account and the ability to repossess property if any of this is not paid. Where, where does the money come from? Madam Chair, point of order. I, I might suggest that since this is going to be on our agenda next week, that we save the arguments for what this is and what this isn't, because I think you're, it's getting away from the people that are lined up waiting to speak on your oh, topic. Fair, fair point. Thank you, Commissioner Jay. Exactly. Fair point. Thank you, Commissioner Jay. Oh, well, I do, I do have another question. What, who did the phase one study? Uh, the phase one study, I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me see. Do you guys remember phase one study of our uh, environmental? Aptum. 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 And do you have a copy of that finding that there was no uh, use of the full report pulled yet? We do have the full report. Our, we have the full report at our co corporate office. We provide the summary report to TDEC, and we're working on getting the corporate report, the uh, full report from our corporate office to share with um, TDEC. Yes, sir. Okay. Would, would you like to share that with you as well when we uh, have that this week? <laughs> well, y yes, yeah. but um, do you deny that there are uh, actual build facilities, small storage facilities? on that piece of property? I, I do not deny there are okay. buildings that uh, did store dynamite over 25 years ago. Uh, they never manufactured, they only stored. And that has a very different classification than how this property has been uh, presented. Uh, with no actual um, production happening on this site, there is very minimal environmental impact even storing it. And once again, it has not been stored in over 25 years uh, since the last land use map in 2000. What, what action has, uh, um, has there been any oh, excavation or, or anything, moving a land or anything like that on this property at this time? Not that I'm aware of, uh, unless there was a little bit of, with the environmental report, but I, I don't believe there has been, no, sir. Okay. And the design review plan was not submitted by uh, Schubert uh, Family Limited Partnership. It was submitted by D.R. Horton, correct? Correct. We have a okay. contract on the property, okay. uh, an option on the property, yes, sir. And, but D.R. Horton has not purchased the property yet, is that correct? That's correct. Thank the you. Schubert's still on the property. Okay. And they sued 22 years ago the last time this tool was used. Uh, the, the only reason they did not pursue that lawsuit was because the matriarch of the family passed away and the kids did not want to pursue the lawsuit at the time. That's all the questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saltzman. I do apologize, but we do need a five-minute break, so we will be back here 3833. I call the Knox County zoning back into order. Uh, the, next, the next speaker is Ben Mullins. Mr. Mullins, if you'll give your name and address for the record, please. Well, ben Mullins, 550 West Main Street. Uh, I, I represent D.R. Horton, who has the option, is the option holder on this property. Mr. Salzman presented this uh, commission with two options. And while I'll say no attorney ever relishes uh, the <coughs> prospect of standing before a legislative body and discussing a potential lawsuit against them, um, because the prospect of downzoning this property only three months after it was rezoned, went through the full legislative process, to then take that away three months is going to be an unprecedented action. And we'd have no choice but to enforce uh, what we think our rights are to bring a lawsuit against the county. 
Now, whether that lawsuit is successful or not, there's this type of, is of lawsuit would raise issues that have never really been litigated before in Tennessee and would create issues of first impression that would take a long time to go through to figure out where exactly this is. But we don't have to get there uh, tonight. Um, the fact is, Mr. Fox did say that there was a downzoning of the property against the, uh, the uh, neighborhood, uh, the property owner's um, wishes, and that was true, and it was for this property, but under vastly, vastly different circumstances. As uh, this property was previously zoned industrial uh, because it was used to, uh, to store dynamite on the property. Um, after that dynamite was moved off the property, it remained industrial. Then we adopted a sector plan that called for this to be low-density residential. We adopted in 2001 a growth policy plan which uh, did not allow for industrial property to be considered on this. And because it was incongruent with those plans, county commission initiated a rezoning at that time. Now, the rezoning that happened was in compliance with the plans that we adopted. Uh, we fully litigated that and argued that, and it was a rational conversation. It was thoroughly and thoughtfully vetted. People had disagreements. Neighbors were opposed to it. All the points that Mr. Fox wants to raise now were already fully discussed and adjudicated by this body only three months ago. Now, the only change in conditions, and you have to have a change in conditions for zoning, even though uh, this body has the authority to initiate a rezoning, there has to be, you have to follow your own rules. And Mr. Fox keeps uh, citing to section 3.0 of the Knox County Zoning Ordinance, which that ordinance says the proposed amendment shall be necessary because of substantially changed or changing conditions in the area and districts affected or the county generally. Nothing has changed since July other than that we've had an election and we have a new county commissioner who's representing the interests of his constituents. And I can appreciate, uh, we've had very uh, frank conversations, and I, and I appreciate what he's doing, uh, but I do have to push back a little bit on that we only need to look at the, the interests of the current residents. In fact, the zoning statute, the enabling statute, uh, Tennessee Code Annotated 137103, which is part of the statutes that give this body the authority to institute rezonings, says that the purpose of zoning regulations uh, shall be designed and enacted for the purposes of promoting the health, safety, morals, convenience, order, prosperity, and welfare of the present and future inhabitants of the state or the county. So we have to look at not only our, what's best for the current, but what's best for people in the future. Uh, I, I, I do appreciate Mr. Um, Fox also mentioning Japan and not having children. Well, if you can't afford a house, you're not going to be able to afford to have a, ch a child, and you're not going to plan for children if you're having trouble finding attainable housing, which that's why the whole purpose of this process, this process was, was thorough and thoughtful. And while Mr. Fox doesn't want to relitigate it, he wants to send it back to Planning Commission so it can then be relitigated. And again, that is a completely unprecedented uh, action. But the real question is not if, if whether this commission has that authority, but whether under these circumstances that authority should be exercised. It's not whether you can, it's whether you should. And does this body want to start a policy where any rezoning can be taken away? What would that do to the development community? What would they do? Would they continue to have neighborhood meetings and try to have thoughtful and engaging uh, discourse with the, the neighbors to come up with maybe what was best to listen to their concerns, which is what we did here. We did have several meetings and tried to have conversations, and we did come up with conditions on improving the roads and ways to pay for that that has never been done in Tennessee before. Um, no, what would likely happen is that the developers would try to vest their rights as quickly as possible. Seven seconds. TDEC doesn't have anything to do with the rezoning. Whatever is going on with TDEC, and we're fully cooperating with them and have been from the beginning, that's going to happen whether this property is zoned agricultural, whether it's zoned PR at four units an acre, whether it's zoned PR at two units an acre. Moving forward with the development plan, we have to address any environmental concerns, and that will be addressed. That's a red herring. So I'd ask that you uh, deny this resolution and do not send this back to Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Uh, next speaker will be Don Close. Are you speaking for her? Uh, okay. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, if you'll state your name and address for the Can record, she speak please. for me when I... Uh, good evening, uh, members of the commission. Uh, Daniel Sanders, 920 Volunteer Landing. Sweet. If you'll speak up some, please. I keep forgetting about this. There you go. 920 Volunteer Landing, Suite 200, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37915. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here. I am here to express my support and support of my clients for uh, Ms. Commissioner Fox's rezoning resolutions. These rezonings represent a return to responsible development, development that is not only consistent with the character of that community, but also that align with the desires of the people who live in South Knox County. First and foremost, I want to address the process, and Mr. Mullins mentioned this a minute ago. I'm, I'm glad that we're in agreement. It's, it's not about whether you can or not, because you absolutely can do this. Uh, the, it's important to emphasize that these rezonings will follow the same procedural safeguards as other rezoning decisions. State law outlines a clear and established policy uh, for amendment of the zoning ordinance. Uh, this ensures due process. And so there's nothing at all illegal about these rezoning proposals. Um, just as the original rezonings uh, were approved, these rezonings will go through a process. Uh, the notion that revisiting these rezonings now uh, is somehow incorrect is simply uh, it's beyond the pale. Uh, and if, if Mr. Mullins could have st stood here and told you that it was illegal, he would have. Uh, secondly, I want to acknowledge uh, some lawsuits of my own, right? Uh, we have filed lawsuits on behalf of our clients challenging these initial rezonings. Uh, the lawsuits were filed because we believe that these original decisions did not serve the best interests of the community and were otherwise illegal. Um, the community's rural character was not properly considered. Um, Higher density projects in this area are just not appropriate. Uh, the, they overlooked uh, community concerns like increased traffic and noise and strain on local infrastructure. However, these lawsuits do not prevent this commission from taking action today. The legal challenges that we have filed are in response to the prior rezonings. Those uh, change the agricultural uses to low density residential uh, uses. Uh, approving these uh, rezonings or initiating this process today could very well end in the dismissal of the pending lawsuits against the county. Um, so if, if the rezonings are approved, our lawsuits will likely be dismissed as moot because the relief that we are requesting in court would have been achieved by this commission. Um, and I want to mention one other thing. Um, there, is a, there is the idea of vested rights in this state. Um, you, you don't have a, a right to a rezoning until you have a vested right to the rezoning, and that only occurs in one of two ways, whether you get a building permit or a, a preliminary development plan, or, or a pre preliminary development plan approved. And so neither one of those things have, have occurred, and if Mr. Mullins could have asserted a, a vested right to this, he would have done that tonight. Um, so the rezonings are not just about legal or procedural matters, they're about the future of this community. The people of District 9 fought hard in this recent election uh, for a better approach to development. One that respects the character of their neighborhood, uh, preserves agricultural land, and ensures that growth occurs in a responsible and sustainable way. The rezonings that Commissioner Fox has proposed today will help protect the character of South Knox County and limit the kind of unchecked development that strains local infrastructure and increases traffic, uh, overcrowds schools, disrupts the quality of life for long-term residents. Um, the uh, rezoning on Tipton Station Road was a good example of this. The parcels, parcels were originally zoned for agricultural uses uh, the zonings that allowed for higher density development were opposed by our local residents who understand the impacts of that, that type of development. Um, and so we believe they were incorrect when they were done and you have a right to, to or a opportunity to right a wrong in this case. Um, I also want to pick up on a couple of things that Mr. Salzman said, and, and this sort of goes into the land use economics of this type of development. Basically what he's saying is that this type of development needs three million dollars of infrastructure in order for it to make sense for the county and they're willing to do that uh, under certain conditions that pass that 
future development onto future taxpayers. Now, it happens to be the taxpayers that will live in this neighborhood. But what you have been doing with your development pattern over the past 20, 10, 20 years is this exact type of thing. You are approving developments that are underfunded. You are passing that cost along to future taxpayers. The, the, the comprehensive plan has a study that's buried deep into the appendix that shows this, that you're operating in a $20 million annual deficit. Every Mr. Year. Sanders, if you could wrap up, I'm sorry. I'm trying to so, keep everybody on their time. So I'm, 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 I'm glad to hear a developer finally say the quiet part out loud. You are doing this to the detriment of future residents. And when we want to think about future residents, we think about future taxpayers. You're selling them down the road. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Margie Grace. She's going to yield. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that is all of our speakers for 2814 Tipton Station. Oh, Don is going to. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you yielded your time to Mr. Sanders, so I apologize. If you That's can okay. state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Don Close, um, Sevierville Pike. Um, you know, the Tipton Station um, property is not one of our properties that's on, you know, Andy's list. But I do want to address this because this is really important to the community. The density that keeps getting approved by this body in rural communities is what has everybody be in an outrage in the community. I want you to get real clear four, five, six houses per acre is unacceptable in a rural community. We do understand development has to happen, but we don't want this kind of development. That's what takes it out of the character of a rural community. When you start putting in so many houses and it makes it really dense, and that's what has it look out of place in these communities. These people that, you know, the Tipton people have been fighting, you know, for their property to just have two per acre. I think that that's reasonable. And I think that that's what you guys should approve when you're actually doing the rezoning. But today is really about reviewing the, um, what's been approved for these properties and we think there's nothing wrong with giving them a review. A lot of push, push, push was going on in order to get it in front of um, county commissioners that were much more pro-growth. And I don't think that some of the time to really evaluate some of these um, developments was really fully flushed out. That's all, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I believe that is everybody. I didn't miss anybody this time, did I? Okay. Um, so I'm going to open the floor up to commissioners and uh, Commissioner Rawls. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to say this as we, Commissioner Brown said something. He said we need to look at the bigger picture. And, and so I, I want us to, this, this, is a, this comment is to all of the resolutions, not specifically Tipton but all of them. Mr. Mullen said we, sh we have the ability to do things and we can, but what level of precedence does this set to the business community going forward? If, if we can unravel projects easily, we don't look stable to the folks who are coming here. We have a significantly a $300 million project coming to Midway. A company, a company is deciding to come no, here please. because they want to make this their home office. Because this is a great place to be. That's gonna be 400 jobs. Now, do we want to say, does the body that comes behind us want to say, oh, let's unravel that project and change how it's done 
and then we look weak to those folks because those folks are here all the time. I work for Marriott. I lived in DC and brought 500 jobs here when Marriott expanded. Why? Because this is a great place. It looks like a great place. It is a great place. I won't curse on Mike, but it is a great place. So let's think about the whole. And trust me, I hear the development piece. I hear it. Don't, don't think you're falling on deaf ears. I hear it. But I'm trying to take a balanced approach and say, how do we become greater and larger and then respect everybody that's here? And I think when you take a piece of legislation, which we do have the ability to change zones, we do. But if you say we're not going to do it because of extenuative circumstances and a next body comes behind us and says, well, let's undo the ball field. Let's undo Axel Logistics, who's creating a home office here, born and raised, created 600 jobs, right? Like, so again, to what Commissioner Brown said, specifically on the property piece, he was talking about property, but I'm talking about the whole county. Let's think about the whole county as we do business. That's my two cents. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I, I too want to make just a general statement because I owe it to my constituents across Knox County. Um, I first, I want to thank the community members. Thank you for your engagement and thank you for your advocacy efforts. Um, these folks in South Knoxville, I mean, they have a deep love and a deep concern for their community. So I completely understand why they support um, these resolutions and I do not fault them. I had the opportunity to spend um, a great amount of time reviewing and researching these parcels and their history, um, meeting with community members, the parcel owners representation, staff, legal, advocacy groups, outside counsel, and, and even just constituents throughout Knox County. Um, additionally, I am familiar with governmental rezonings, their intent, and the scope of authority. And as I have watched my own community in Hardin Valley grow exponentially over the last probably 25 years, I too thought about exploring this option with my local legislators as a citizen then, but I didn't. And I didn't because I just do not think that it is right for any legislative body to have the authority to rezone, to rezone property without the owner's consent. Even if, even if I disagree with the legislative body's ruling on the property, which I do, I disagree with every outcome of this body's deliberation and ruling on the density of all of the properties named in these resolutions. But on the flip side, the cases were presented, they were argued, and they were ruled upon very recently. And if I look at the criteria, the criteria that we are bound by duty to consider for all rezoning amendment requests, even those where the proposed zoning district is partially related to the place type and the criteria for the plan update, since the time of each case being ruled upon, which is what we have to consider, I cannot justify exercising this authority. I think that by doing this, we fracture the integrity of the policies that define the criteria for zoning and plan amendment requests that we worked hard to elevate and to put into place. And as I said, I think that the property owner should be a willing participant in the process. Further, we are working hard to create higher standards for all development and expand preservation efforts through policy. I think that that is the proper and most impactful path forward. Lastly, I was asked if this is an ethical issue for me, and it is. Despite who the property owner is and despite how very much I would like to change the outcome, as I have said, 
I just cannot support initiating a process where the landowner is not a willing participant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Frazier. Commissioner Jackson? Yeah, I just wanted to <clears throat> explain to everybody on the commission and uh, my, our constituents my position on this. And I got a very, I, I really enjoyed this weekend. I drove through this area, drove down to John Sevier, drove down Tipton Station, drove all the way around uh, the, the, uh, uh, the future development that we'll be talking about here in a minute. But my issue on this is that, you know, we're, this is not a discussion of whether to rezone, downzone, change zoning. It's an issue of there's, you know, the accusation is that something illegal was done, and I'm not an attorney. So the proper venue for litigating, you know, something that needs, you know, needs to go through the court system. And a lawsuit, you know, and going through the court system is the proper venue for this, not county commission. The property owner, as you said, has been stated, did not request this. So let the court system and a judge determine whether this is proper or improper. Um, and that's going to be my opinion. I do have a lot of sympathy for the the, prop, the property owners surrounding this, but uh, I don't feel as though this is the county commission's vent proper. This isn't the proper venue for downzoning. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Durrett. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would also like to um, make a statement in regards to all these resolutions. Um, I concur with my colleagues. Um, this is, a, to me, a, a slippery slope that we could be headed down very quickly. Um, aside from the pot potential lawsuits that have been mentioned this evening, um, you know, it has been mentioned that we should plan for the now and not necessarily include the future. However, one could argue that that is exactly the reason our infrastructure is the way it is right now, is that planning for the now and not be that forward thinking for the future in our uh, growth and development. Um, vested rights has also been brought up this evening. Um, setting a precedent on properties being subject to a rezoning after they have recently been rezoned will result in property owners racing to obtain vested rights, which could result in developers moving immediately to get a development plan approved so they don't lose their recent zoning. That development plan might be the bare bones and not what is best for the area. Um, I don't think that would be the best use of property in, in, in property laws and zonings and could result in more of the same of what we have now, where our infrastructure is not keeping pace and we're not getting what is appropriate for the areas in which these zonings are, are brought forward. Thank you, Commissioner Durrett. Madam uh, Chairperson, may I have just a moment, please? You can, have, seen you can have one minute. One, okay, I can do that in a minute. First off, reread what you got before you. Reread it. What does it say? There's nothing in there about zoning changes, this, that, and the other, except for going back to our culture. You're trying to lump two things together, and we were not, we didn't, our people didn't come here tonight prepared to talk about the EPA issues and all this other regards to the, to the current zoning. That's not the issue before you here. The issue is what Mr. Fox has come up with and said, I want to zone this back to agriculture. That's the only issue you got right now. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, um, Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I believe Mr. Mullins brought it up um, and um, the, the representative from DR Horton brought it up as well. Um, my question for um, uh, law director is if obviously it's, it's codified in the state um, where down zoning, if the, the vested rights um, have not been applied yet, um, obviously 
it's not disputed that we, we have the authority to, to down zone. But the threat was brought up, you know, what if the upzoning occurred? It's not codified that says that we can uh, do that. And being in a permissive state, if, if the state doesn't give us the authority to do that, is there a gray area that says that eventually a future commission would have the uh, authority to do so? What, what the state law says is that this commission has the power to create zoning maps and change them from time to time. It does not specific about whether it goes up or down, okay? So to the extent that you have the power to down zone property against the will of the, the property owner, mm -hmm. you have the same power to up zone it, if okay. you wish. It has to be a rational basis. There has to be you know, some rational basis for the, the reason you rezone, but you can go up, you can go down. You know, there's, there's no limitation either way Mm -hmm. apart from potential liabilities that accrue when you, when you, you know, rezone property against the property owner's will. So. Okay. And, and the, re the reason I ask that is because it seems like that, that's kind of an underlying fear as far as setting a precedent. Because as much, uh, I, I agree with Commissioner Frazier, as much as I don't, this doesn't sit, this zoning doesn't sit well with me, um, but it did go through the legislative process. Um, and to think that we would, we would pass something today that the next commission or 20 years from now, a commission didn't, didn't like our decision. And just because they didn't like it, they wanted to, to undo it. Um, that also is, is a little unsettling. Um, but, uh, I, I do think it's it's a great power, but not to, you know, I guess the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And so not, although we have the power, reserving it for those extreme circumstances where um, if we were, if this commission was deceived or lied to, or we, um, there was some, um, something underlying that uh, we we weren't able to consider at the time Maybe, um, or you know, over time, like a, like twenty years goes by, and with the way this was done initially, where it was something that didn't apply anymore, and they were never going to use it for that, um, and the, the future growth map or, or comprehensive plans change in the future, and and the county is going a different direction in that area, rezoning it to make it comply. Um, the way I where I'm standing on on property rights is, I I will. I don't want I don't want the government to compel me to have to do something. You know, it, it, we're here telling folks yes, you can do something or no, you can't do something. But we're not here telling someone they have to do something. Um, and so that that's where I have an issue with with the up zoning um, that uh, Commissioner Fraser mentioned a minute ago. But um, yeah, this this is a this is a tough one for me. I don't as, as much as I. The, the, the decision that was was made, I wouldn't have been in favor of it, but at this time, I, it's, it's difficult for me to go just because we don't like it. Um, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there are, um, and maybe Director uh, Snowden can uh, fill in too, but if, if TDEC is involved moving forward, um, there would be provisions and safety measures in place and they would have regulations um, restricting the development on certain parcels of, of this property, correct? Yes, that's correct. We, we don't issue a grading permit until TDEC has provided their comments, so we would defer to them and any requirements they add as far as restrictions we would uh, add to our grading permit also. Um, Commissioner Fox, would you like to speak last? We have some other commissioners that would like to speak, if that's okay with you. I was going to uh, ask for the last okay. word, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, Commissioner Hill? Thank you. Um, just like um, you, you said, Commissioner um, Adam, I cannot 
uh, telling you how many uh, times in the last four years uh, zonings have, have passed that have not sat well with me either. Um, <clears throat> people have gotten elected that have not sat well with me. Decisions have been made, you know, at our national level that have not sat well with me. That said, I cannot think of a bigger intrusion of our government into our lives than to allow a body such as this to, what, to Commissioner Fox's point, he's not, you know, we're not asking for the rezoning at this moment, but we are asking for someone else, a government entity, to consider the fact that your property may be rezoned. You know, as a property owner, I don't want somebody knocking on my door and telling me that, oh, I know you didn't ask for this, and I know you didn't want this, but uh, we might be changing the zoning on, on, on your property that, that you own. Um, I just, I think, I think fundamentally, most of us were elected on the premise of less government in our lives, not more, and to, to allow, um, or for a body to entertain this kind of control, I just, I just think fundamentally, as your basic right as a property owner, I cannot think of a bigger violation than having that happen to you on your property that you own. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Uh, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Sanders, could I ask you a question? Is he still here? Did you say there were some lawsuits filed already on this? Uh, could you speak to that? There, there have been. I filed. There have been. Have handful, they been settled? A handful of lawsuits uh, challenging the initial rezonings. Um, and so there's actually one of those that has a motion coming up on Friday. Mr. Sanders, will you make sure the mic is on, please, and, and step forward? I need to get myself a lapel mic when I come up here. There are some rezonings, uh, several of them. Uh, on these initial ones. One of them has a motion for summary judgment coming up on Friday, okay. I think. So there's nothing that's been Mr. already Mr. Forster settled. is in on that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not been settled? Anything has been not no. settled on the... No. That, but that one's ongoing since 22. 22. Okay. Thank you. And I, I, I... Just one more. You know, if the... If the commission moves forward with this and they are, were ultimately successful in getting these things sent back to where they were before the lawsuit was filed, then the lawsuit would you know, either be dismissed by us or dismissed by the county on a motion. So we're only asking here for what we've asked for in the, in the lawsuit. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other questions, Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, first of all, I want to uh, respond to uh, Mr. Mullins. Uh, I said that uh, kind of my philosophy is that the um, pri that the county government should primarily serve. I didn't say only serve current users, but primarily or current citizens, but primarily. And I would like to bring balance to that. And let's just look at the agenda today. What kind of balance took place with respect to the interests of current property owners? in District 9 and developers, future, in other words, future citizens. There was no balance. Every motion or every uh, project that I opposed got passed anyways, and it's always been that way, and that's why I got elected. So I, that's just, that's not a reasonable point. That, that's not a, a cogent point that, uh, well, we gotta think about the future and, and not just think about current people. Current citizens are never accommodated. Uh, now, uh, with, there has been two substantial changes since this was originally um, uh, originally adopted. Number one, there's been a lawsuit filed against the county of this parcel, and that fits uh, 6.301A. The proposed amendment shall be necessary because of substantially changed or changing conditions in the area and, and zones affected. And also, of course, there, there's this TDEC letter. So there is a, a rational basis. Now, again, we're not voting on it today, but I just want, to give, I want the process to be started. Let's take some more time. 
Uh, now, I, I did want to uh, address this. I, I'm glad that this was mentioned. Um, long before any of us stepped to the uh, stepped up to the plate of being a, uh, a commissioner, there was a decision made by society, by Tennessee, by Knox County, that there would be zoning, and we stepped away from. Uh, how land use used to take place under common law with the right of lateral support, and that was about it. Uh, there was a decision made that more factors come into play with, with respect to land use than just what the owner desires to do with the land. Uh, and so what are all these factors? Well, uh, community sentiment and, and uh, character of the land. In other words, your how your proposed use of land may affect your neighbor is now a recognized as a factor, whereas it was not recognized as a factor before, uh, you know, the the uh, 30s, I think, is when, well, actually earlier than that, even, if, I think it was around 1915 when uh, zoning, the concept of zoning first started. So uh, because of that, the, the property rights argument just doesn't, to me, carry as much weight as it used to because, let's face it, every time there's a condition imposed on somebody's uh, zoning, why that's without their consent. Now they might agree to it, but uh, they didn't ask for it. Um, so it, it seems that at times the body, our body is not uh, concerned about property rights when, uh, when they want certain conditions to be imposed. Uh, this, is, this is an imposition certainly, or it could be an imposition on the anticipated economic use of the property, but if you look at the case law that discusses the, uh, the, whether somebody has a vested interest, it's what was it zoned at the time it was purchased? Not, not do, we, do we wanna make money? Hey, we got great plans to make money with this piece of property. No, it's did you, uh, what, were, what was it when you uh, purchased it and what were the potential uses at that time? So the fact that, that a, uh, a landowner may have great plans is really not a consideration with the courts. The courts don't say, oh, well, wow, you can't interfere with that. They're going to do great things and make a lot of money. No, it's the use at the time of purchase. Uh, let's see here. I, I, think, uh, I think that future, I think that future citizens, however, if they're looking at Knox County as a place to move to, would hope that they would actually have a voice in what happens to their land once they're in, once, once the, uh, they've actually moved into this community. So uh, I don't think that it makes a community unstable just because uh, the body, the legislative body, wants to take an additional look at uh, how land is being used and, what, and, and zoning matters. So, I, and I think, you know, concern about commercial developments, that's really apples and oranges. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, the county right now, we, we all know that we're looking at some, some tremendous financial uh, challenges. And as Mr. Sanders put it, it's finally been stated that when a development takes place, there is substantial investment by the county itself that uh, it, you know, eventually might get paid off, but the word is eventually. Uh, and, and that's why they're saying, hey, we, we'll make the people moving in pay off this, uh, pay off this, uh, the cost of infrastructure. But you know, in regards to all of these projects taken as a whole, you can see that it's costing us to, uh, to approve these and to move forward with these when uh, the infrastructure is thin. And, and I would say that the infrastructure in South Knox County is uh, already taxed. And in fact, if you look at some developments down on Highland View Drive, and, and just for everybody knows, Highland View Drive runs perpendicular to Chapman Highway, very close to uh, Bower Field. Uh, there is some high, there's already a, uh, a subdivision back in there that has, I don't know, 200 homes or something like that at probably four or five units per acre, maybe six. Um, and 
so the the inter and then there's some proposed there's some RB zoning at the at the intersection of Highland View and Pickens Gap and, and some other planned residential. The the improvement of Highland View Drive is not even on the books when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the the future infrastructure plans for, under Advanced Knox. It's not even listed. So we're already behind. Not, South Knox County is already behind when it comes to roads. It's already behind. Uh, well, at least with roads and with schools. Uh, we haven't really discussed that. It's already behind with respect to schools. Uh, and I know that, uh, and I want to give uh, thanks to Commissioner Daly because he did, I think, arrange for investment in, in uh, schools and an improvement to a new hope well, but uh, look, that, that's, that's years out. Uh, so that's my, that's my response to uh, the, we have to keep, the idea that we have to keep investing because we need money. Well, it costs money. It costs money to engage in these uh, developments. It, it does not generate revenue in the short term. Um, I, I'm not saying anything, with this particular project, nothing illegal was done. Uh, and I think the purpose of planning is so that you invest, you have, when you have money, you invest in, in future infrastructure. Well, uh, sometimes you've got to save your pennies. You, you don't spend money, uh, you don't borrow money on a credit card to, to have more money available to you. So that, that's it. That, that's my response to uh, some of the points that were raised. And so I'm ready for the vote, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, so let's just go back and uh, give me your motion one more time just so we can remind everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My motion is that we uh, adopt a resolution to send the zoning of 2814 Tipton Station Road back through uh, the rezoning process for consideration by the Planning Commission. But the, the application has to be initiated by this body. Okay, thank you. So we've got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox and a second by Commissioner Lee. All in favor? Aye. I'm sorry. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Hill? No. Commissioner Lee? Commissioner Thompson? No. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Jay? No. Commissioner Frazier? Respectfully, no. Commissioner Rawls? No. Commissioner Durrett? No. Commissioner Oster? No. Commissioner Jackson? Nay. Motion fails. Next item, please. Item number 16, 24-10-2-RZ is to initiate an application for rezoning from planned residential to agricultural. Property is located at 8802 Sevierville Pike, parcel ID 138270, part of. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Fox, um, would you like to speak to this or let opposition come up and speak? Uh, just briefly, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, there is a substantial change, once again, with respect to this property. This property was initially a part of a larger tract, and uh, a ha approximately half of this chunk was donated to Legacy Parks. So I believe that this uh, property should go through the Planning Commission again because there's been a tremendous change to the land use uh, now, as a matter of fact, compared to the land use that was ad adopted and the zoning that was adopted when this uh, project was initially approved back in uh, 2022. So there's a substantial change, and, and I think it justifies a, uh, a new look by the Planning Commission as to the land use for 8802 Sevierville Pike. Thank you. Um, our first person is Don Close. Hi. 
Uh, Don Close, uh, Sevierville Pike. Um, our property sits right directly across the street from this parcel, and um, our home is a historic home. It has a great history. Uh, it was uh, the uh, old stagecoach uh, for uh, between Sevierville and uh, Knoxville, um, and it's a beautiful property. So, um, you know, we've been, you know, haggling about this, all these properties with Thunder Mountain property. There have been five parcels, and every one of them has passed. And we want to know when our property rights are going to get addressed, because it has a profound effect on our community. There is very little ever considered for the, um, the current residents of the area. There just isn't. So y again, you know, it mostly has to do for us with density. The density is just too high. And it doesn't fit in our rural community. We have tiny little roads. We have little country roads. They don't have any shoulders. You know, we're gonna throw hundreds of people, you know, every day on these roads with, you know, thousands of trips a day. We just think it's just not a good use. It doesn't follow any of the tenets of the growth policy plans. It just doesn't. It doesn't meet the density. It doesn't meet the character. Um, it doesn't have any infrastructure. The community is rock solid against it. You know, we have a petition of over 1,300 people for a tiny little community that doesn't want any of this development at this density. We're okay. You know, for us, property rights is kind of different than how you guys think of it. Property rights for me is when I buy a property and it has whatever the zoning is on it, that's the zoning I get. I'm entitled to ask for new zoning. But it seems to me, since we've been in this process for about three years, there hasn't been a single large development that has been voted down yet. It's 100%. Yes, more development. Yes, whatever the density is that the developer wants. Lots of consideration is given to the profitability of these projects. That's not germane. What's germane is what's appropriate for the community. What's appropriate for the neighborhood not what's appropriate for this guy's property, you know, is profit margin. That doesn't seem to me to be a legitimate reason. So, you know, we respectfully want to have these, pro these properties reevaluated for a number of different reasons. I'm gonna make probably a controversial statement here, but this property across the street, the ball field was used the leasing of the ball field was used to get votes to approve that. It was being held over the commissioner's heads. There was pressure from the developer. Hey, if you don't give us the zoning we want, you don't get your lease for the ball field. So they worked out a deal behind the scenes, doesn't involve the community, and voila, all of a sudden they've got the votes and they get the, the, the new lease. Well, a year and a half later, that same ball field, we want to make that commercial property now, ma'am. And they donated junk land that's a swamp to put the ball field on to the tune of 15 to $20 million. Well, remember, we're good Republicans in here, many of us. And that's an unfunded mandate as far as I can see. Where's that $15 million coming from, folks? That just doesn't fly out of the sky. And we asked for something reasonable. We said, get the funding, you know, get us a guarantee for that ball field before you rezone the commercial. You know, it's one of the next ones that's coming up. But that's not done because we had to hurry up and get that hurry up offense to get it approved while we had a home commissioner that was pro this developer. Remember, we're batting zero, they're batting five. You know, this doesn't seem fair to us. 
and we feel like there's undue pressure, you know, and maybe some, you know, side deals, back deals, whatever, it just feels kind of dirty to us. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next speaker is Margie Grace. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, Margie Grace, uh, Sevierville Pike, uh, across the street from 8802. Thank you. And um, I also am a member of and a, rep and a representative of the Dry Hollow community, the 1,300 signatures that we have, and 700 active members. Also, the Save Bower Field group. Um, I am here to actually find myself agreeing with Commissioner Jay for the first time ever. <laughs> it's about a big picture. It is about the big picture. This is about the big picture. We want our children to come home. Will there be a home to come to? That's worth it. I agree with Commissioner Rawls' proposal. Absolutely, let's think about the whole county. Let's think about the roads and the schools and the hospitals and the ambulances and the quality of life for current and future residences. We take offense at the NIMBY accusation. How dare you? We have invested heavily, most of us as homeowners, that's our single biggest investment in our lives. That's the only thing we've got to hand our children. Our old bones are going to the ground and they're throwing dirt in our face. That's how it ends. Sorry for the spoiler. We have got to think about where we're headed. Let's think about the whole county. Let's think about it. In light of the words we just heard in this room a few moments ago, this very room, not even 15, 20, I don't know, half an hour ago, we heard, we learned our infrastructure is lagging our development. We've learned that the more we try to get property taxes online, the deeper in the hole we go. It's in that 500-page advance Knox document, the fiscal impact of development, at what density makes sense. Inside of the reason we do planning is because urban sprawl without, with ultra expensive, remote, non-existent infrastructure does not, does not, is not good planning. It is not good stewardship for our future. And I will tell you, the, the developers are not paying for the concomitant burden caused by the development. And the future residents are not paying for the services that are required for their own benefit, the mandatory services. When we call the cops, we like it if they can come. We like it if the ambulance doesn't have to do triage over the phone and go, well, we're going to make three stops and we'll get to you as quick as we can, ma'am. That is happening now. That burden of infrastructure is shifted to the taxpayers. We learned that in this room not a few minutes ago. And how is it shifted to the existing homeowners and existing property owners who've already paid for the roads that are here now? It's shifted via bonds that are, sh that are given by the IDB that are guaranteed by whom? That are due when? We are sitting on a ticking time bomb now of bonds that are due in the very short future. And our mayor will be gone by the time that particular sack of caca blows up. It is, is it sound planning? Is it good governance? <clears throat> is it good stewardship? to build housing so very remote from these incoming businesses that Mr. Rios has referred to, which we 100,000% support. We are for good, prosperous, healthy futures. I know we can get there. I know we can get there if we look for balance. I know we can get there. I know we can do it. I know we can do it, and you all, should take it on. We have no effective bus service. We have no good 
infrastructure way in South Knox County at the very border. For these jobs that are going to be where? Hmm. I do not believe that there, this is good housing for what you say is coming. I believe good housing happens nearby. 15-minute city, not a god-awful plan. What happened? What would happen if that ball field stayed where, where it is, where it's got $1.3 million worth of repairs? It gets a stoplight so we can get in and out safely. And right next to that, bordering that, the single recreational uh, uh, property in our area, the single one that has public access, the single property right around it were a few condos, smaller places, affordable, entry level, a little bit behind those, a little bit different, a little bit better. Had instant mixed community, instant commercial there. You gonna put commercial there? Uh-uh. That commercial rezoning is about something else. That's about those HUD grants that allows you on commercial Mr. to Grace, put super dense housing. You could wrap it up, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna ask you, let's not let the short-sighted decisions of the past justify continued and ongoing short-sightedness. Do not sell us down the river. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Forrester. Thank you. Taylor Forrester, 1111 North North Shore Drive, Knoxville, Tennessee. Here on behalf of the property owner, uh, Thunder Mountain Properties. This property was rezoned um, May 31st, 2022. Uh, several commissioners were, were on commission at that time. And if you recall, there was uh, two county commission meetings that this was considered over. It, those were separated by, by several months. There were discussions that took place in that. There, there was a lot that was involved in the ultimate rezoning of this property. There, there was lengthy meetings by county commission at, at both occasions, uh, multi-hour meetings. Um, what gets lost in translation a lot of times is, is you know, this comment that, that the developer continues to get what they want, they want. But if you look back and you track us to see maybe initially what they applied for, uh, then Planning Commission, through Planning Staff, had a lesser recommendation. Developer accepted that at Planning Commission, then they moved to County Commission. With that lesser recommendation, even then at County Commission, it ends up with a lesser density then. You know, so it... it I guess it has this appearance that the developer is continuously getting exactly what they're asking for, but, but that's not exactly uh, true. With this property, at the time, it had a zoning, um, a, a, a varied zoning of ag, general commercial, commercial business, and um, RA, the uh, low density residential. It was rezoned to plan residential um, with conditions related to the density. Uh, this, as, as I mentioned, the rezoning was discussed at length. Uh, conditions were put in place uh, r related to what areas of the property to be developed at what density and what areas to stay off of. Uh, this proposed resolution is a substantial, uh, would result in a substantial downzoning that would have great consequences to my client's property, including the substantial investment uh, that they've already made in reliance on that rezoning. This proposed resolution, as was discussed on the previous item, is, is unprecedented, and it's unprecedented for a reason. Uh, the reason is that it would establish a bad precedent for our legislative bodies and the residents uh, of, of Knox County and, and the property owners of Knox County. Uh, you can't look at this as just a, a one-time act. This is something that, if, if approved, it is going to be this slippery slope that, that will continue. You know, at, at what look-back period is it? Is it... 30 days, 60 days, three months, three years. You know, as Commissioner Durrett uh, mentioned on the previous one, it, you're, you're going to have this, as referred to in, in litigation, race to the courthouse to choose the form. It's going to be a race to planning commission to, to establish some bare bones, not necessarily the best development plan for the property, the best development plan for Knox County, but it's something to create that vested right just so they have an insurance policy that they can at least maintain that zoning and what was approved to at least do this development versus doing what my client is doing. You know, the, the initial rezoning happened two years ago. Since then, there's, the other properties have been rezoned. And as discussed at those, at those later rezoning minis, 
what they are doing is creating a master development plan for these properties. They're spending the time, they're spending the resources to create a thoughtful, meaningful development plan that's going to create a, a collaborative, cohesive development that's best for these properties, best for this area. Uh, going through the, the, the studies of the design to see what works here, what's gonna lay out from an infrastructure standpoint. Already have meetings set up next month with TDOT and uh, Mr. Snowden's office to, to sit down and, and start discussing what are the parameters, what are the requirements associated with the, this global kind of traffic impact study that, that was discussed at County Commission. Not only for this immediate vicinity, but also kind of surrounding um, the, these properties to see what other type of infrastructure improvements may be needed, such as additional red lights. Uh, there's been discussion, you know, never want to be here d discussing litigation, but you know, when you consider this unprecedented act and, and the discussion of regulatory taking, and it, it's new in, in Tennessee, it's just recently recognized, so there are not any substantial cases, and these are very fact-specific cases that other courts and the U.S. Supreme Court have taken up, and it's so fact-specific that it's hard to kind of get a handle on what, what a court will do, but what they look at is the economic impact of that regulation and the extent to which the regulation has interfered with distinct investment-backed um, in expectations. So here we have some, you know, some site work that is that has already taken place on this property, including installation of culverts and drainage tiles, substantial engineering associated with the design of this master development plan, not only for this property, the surrounding properties, and we also have a donation of over 100 plus acres that, you know, following the rezoning, um, approximately 18 months after the fact, a, a substantial donation was made in real estate, all in reliance on this you know, rezoning and having the assurance that you have a rezoning in place and that you have the time to create a master development plan and that your your position is secure. Uh, we ask that you deny this this uh, resolution and, and allow this uh, zoning to, to, to be maintained and exist. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sanders. Just a couple of points. Um, Make sure you speak we, up, please. We, we actually filed a lawsuit to challenge this rezoning 60 days after the commission voted to approve it. And so, you know, the, the argument that there have been any subsequent investments in reliance on the rezoning um, is quite frankly uh, incorrect. Okay, you can't rely on something like that that's in, in present litigation. So if they if they've made an if made an investments in this property based on the rezoning, it was always subject to challenge and could have been and and we we argue will be reversed by a court. So you know, uh, second you know we've heard we've heard the argument tonight that this is somehow a slippery slope. Uh, a slippery slope is actually a logical fallacy. You should not make that kind of argument. You should make a determination based on, you know, the facts and circumstances. But to argue that this is some kind of slippery slope, you can go up, down, sideways, back and forth with rezonings, and that can happen at any time. And you know, I always advise my clients: you know, you're in, you're in, a, in a, a situation where you have to be eternally vigilant. And it goes the same way the other way. You know, if you think that rezonings can be used for good, for bad. And you you have to look at each one on the on their facts, and I don't think this one is a uh, is is something that, like I said earlier, I think all of these are, are an opportunity to right the wrong, and so that would that's what I'd ask commission to do. Thanks. Thank you. That's for all the speakers on <clears throat> number sixteen. Um, I'll open up the floor if the commissioners have any questions. Seeing none, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I did want to point out that uh, there are three bases upon which a, uh, a county can be sued successfully. Uh, there's the vested interest basis, the regulatory take, taking entry, uh, point, and then there's equal protection. By the way, I, I'm just kind of... Uh, uh, recounting what uh, Mr. Moyers uh, stated to me during a conversation we had. Uh, but, uh, and I have, of course, looked at some of these cases 
that discuss uh, regulatory takings and vested interest. I, I will point out that when it comes to vested interest, you have three years uh, to do something with land. Um, and, and if that's, that's not accurate, Mr. Morris, I would ask that you step in and make sure I'm, yeah, okay, so you have three years. So there's no, see, when, when we're, we're saying, oh, well, you know, once, once it's done, then it's forever, that's not what the state law says. The state law says you got three years. So see, this body does have the power, and even by under state law authority can come back in and say, you know what, you, uh, you didn't act on this, and we're gonna, we can do something. That's if you've actually taken steps and invested in the property. There has been no investment in this property. It's still fallow land. And uh, a regulatory taking, of course, is just when the, when the government agency does something. It somehow takes a piece of, uh, takes a, a part of the property physically uh, or through a regulation rec makes a piece of property not be used uh, to some extent. And equal protection, uh, I would let Mr. I would defer to Mr. Moyers on that one. It, basically, if you treat two similar pieces of property differently, that, that's really not an issue here. So, uh, but again, what I'm doing or what I'm asking this body to do is to send this back through the process. There has been a substantial change. Uh, it could be that the planning commission says, "Oh, you know what? Uh, now we have this all this parkland right." Uh, abutted up to this uh, land that we'd previously uh, su uh, suggested should be used in a certain way with a certain density of, of housing. And now that we have all this parkland, that may not be an appropriate use of that land at this point. The Planning Commission ought to have an opportunity to speak to that. And, and that's what I'm asking this body to do, is to uh, pass a resolution that would place an application with the Planning Commission to seek the rezoning of this property back to agricultural. Thank you. Okay, so th is that your motion, Commissioner Fox? Yes, that we would uh, pass a resolution that would submit an application to the Planning Commission for rezoning of this property to agricultural. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox, a second by Commissioner Lee. Commissioner Thompson. Um, one thing uh, that that stuck out in this question, because um, obviously you know there there were five of us that weren't here uh, when this was done. Um, oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I uh, um, was about the ball field, and um, she made the comment that it was it was held over and and used as a as a tool or a or a card, or if you will, um, to get the rezoning. Um, was was the ball field and a donation of property ever in the discussion of the rezoning process? With regard to this rezoning? Uh, yeah. I might, be, I might be ahead of myself. Um, uh, this, was, this was two years ago. I don't believe that, that any discussion okay. about rezoning. Okay. I don't recall, though. I mean... I'm getting I'm getting up there okay. in years. My memory. In this the case. lease. I believe, well, I'm a new guy, so <laughs> the lease approval was two or three months executed and approved by county commission before this rezoning. So that that okay. lease had already been negotiated, approved, and accepted by county commission. Say I think in February or March of 2022, and this rezoning didn't come until that May. Okay. Thank the you. approval of it did not happen until May. Okay. Of the rezone. And how 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 long is is the lease is 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 the ball field, uh, uh, the perpetuity of the use of the ball field by the county is that is that in question or is that no? How, how long is that last? It's ten years, isn't it, Taylor? Or is it total eight? effective ten year period? Yeah. Seven seven and a half years left on that lease. Okay. All right. So we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox and a second by Commissioner Lee. Excuse me for one second. Yes, ma'am. So my recollection is quite different than Mr. Taylor's. I'm not saying he's, you know, it's been a couple of years now. But my recollection is that ball field was held over the head. Sorry, it just was. It actually got approved 
a week or two before the rezoning happened on that property. It did, that's just the fact. And it was used again with the land. Hang on a second. Yeah, May 3rd was when it was signed. So it's like a week before. And the ball field was used again. The land donation of the swamp was used to get the rezoning of the commercial property that's coming up, you know, in the next couple of um, proposals by Andy. But it's been used twice, very effectively. And it was discussed in the meetings with the county commissioners. It was discussed. So as far as I can see, it was used as undue pressure. Okay, <clears throat> so we have a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. Let's do a roll call. Commissioner Hill? No. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? No. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Jay? No. Commissioner Frazier? Commissioner Rawls? No. Commissioner Durrett? No. Commissioner Oster? No. Commissioner Jackson? No. Commissioner Russell? Yes. All right. Oh, it failed. Yeah. Uh, the motion failed. Next item, please. Item number 17. 24-10-3-RZ is to initiate a plan amendment from CMU Corridor Mixed Use, HP Hillside Protection slash CA General Business to TN Traditional Neighborhood, POS Parks and Open Space, TCMU Town Center Mixed Use, HP Hillside Protection slash A Agricultural at 8744 Chapman Highway, parcel ID 138104, part of. Thank you. Um, we have Ms. Close is first. Madam Chair, can I uh, speak to, to this uh, resolution I'm offering? Yeah. Okay. You can Thank speak. You. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is a plan amendment. This is not a rezoning. So far, we've been talking about rezoning. This is a request for a, a plan amendment and what I'm requesting that this uh, land use be changed to is the land use that it had when this legislative body adopted advanced Knox in April of 2024. And that's the land use that it had until August of 2024. Three months later, what was the substantial change that led to that? And there's another issue with respect to this particular parcel, uh, or, or this, this, the land use of yeah, this particular parcel. The planning staff in August of 2024 recommended against uh, that or actually in July 2024, when it was first considered by the commission, the, the planning staff recommended against it because it was not following the quarterly review cycle, which this legislative body agreed would, that that's how land use would be considered when the applicant was a private citizen or a, a private entity. So uh, the quarterly cycle was not going to come up with the planning commission until August 2024. And then this if the planning commission approved it, it would be passed to this legislative body in September 2024. The uh, planning commission disregarded an established procedure passed by this body just a couple months before and proceeded to hear this uh, land use change out of cycle. Now, I'll tell you, 
the disregard of established protocols by government bodies is what causes a loss of confidence in government. That's what makes people think, what is going on? Why? Why did everybody just shake hands a couple months ago and say, this is how we're going to do things from now on? And then, just a couple months later, they turn around and say, nah, now nah, we're going to do things the old way, the old-fashioned way. Uh, we're not going to follow rules. I remember that point was brought up a little earlier by uh, Mr. Mullins. You got to follow your own rules. Okay, well, did, they, did, did this legislative body do that? No. And, uh, or did the Planning Commission do that? No. And uh, so then something happened uh, that was not according to established procedure, and I would like to undo that. And I want to place this back to uh, the land use that it had before July of 2024, which was, again, the land use that was approved by this body in April 2024. And the way that would be accomplished is, and my motion is, to pass a resolution that would place an application with the Planning Commission for uh, a change in the land use for this particular parcel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So we got a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? All right, Commissioner um, Hill. Thank you. Uh, just as a, a point of clarification for the new commissioners, the um, issue that um, Mr. Fox um, speaks to, Commissioner Fox speaks to, um, <clears throat> there was debate over that. And um, um, if I'm not mistaken, we, the commission decided to go ahead and hear that because the application process had occurred nearly a, a year before the new plans had been adopted. So this, this in fact, was the reasoning why the body went ahead and and made the made the decision on that you can you can argue that was right or not but that was in fact the reasoning so it was not quite as arbitrary as it was presented mr thompson would you mind to hold your question so we can let the opposition speak and then okay i appreciate that cuz i kind of jumped ahead ms close you're next i'm sorry about that Yeah, I'm a little lost myself. <laughs> um, you know, this uh, ball field is really important to the community. Uh, as Ms. Close, so, can sorry. you hold on just one second? Sure. We've just had an emergency yeah. situation. I, I just want to, I just want to ask a couple of questions to Mr. Forrester before I go. I'm sorry, I just learned my mother pa just passed away. Oh, um, I'm so but sorry. I just have a couple questions that I wanted to ask. <clears throat> so, uh, on the lease. There are seven years remaining on the lease, correct? Yes, sir. Um, and we have an agreement, or we have an agreement with Thunder Mountain Properties that we won't develop, the, the property won't be developed until that lease, un, until we have an agreement on the parks that are being done, correct? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, my the brain's not here. Yep. So there's a seven-year lease, Correct. seven years still remaining. And they agree not to develop that property until the other park is developed, the new ball fields, correct? No, it's the exclusive use of the, of the lease property, meaning Knox County has exclusive right of use of the current lease property. There's nothing we can do to, you know, evict... Knox County from that property or anything during the seven years during the seven during the seven seven and a half years correct okay so but our but my concern on this is that you know what if the ball fields the new ball fields are not done at the end of seven years when the lease is concluded we've already rezoned the property and then it can be developed by Thunder Mountain Properties is that correct Technically, yes, but this is the same context with the lease regardless of the zoning, meaning at the end of this seven-year period, there is no guarantee or, or right of renewal for, for Knox County on that There's, lease property. Correct, correct. I, I get that. But let's say, you know, the, uh, 
community members say, hey, it could cost 20, 30 million. It might cost a million, I don't know. But what if Knox County and our body does not approve the funding and does not find the funding for doing these ball fields, at the end of seven years, Thunder Mountain Properties will be able to develop this property and we will have a piece of land. Is that correct? We'll have a piece of land, what do you, I'm sorry. The, we'll have the, I mean, Legacy Parks. Legacy Parks will own that land that was donated to them. They already own it, yes. They own it. Yes, they own it. The they own it. But at the end of seven years, if we do not put new ball fields there on the Legacy Parks, or Legacy Parks puts new ball fields, Thunder Mountain Properties at the end of the lease will have zoned property that they can then move forward with the development. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. So there's no guarantee that we will have the funding and we will be able to get the, uh, the new ball fields done, correct? Yes, I mean, I, it's... Yeah, I, I just wanted to point that out. I'm still not, you know, I would still... I'm still not in favor of this down zoning, but... You know, I would like to ask whether your client would be agreeable to signing a uh, option with the county on that if this Legacy Parks is unable to fulfill, you know, their 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 uh, uh, the the ball fields, the new ball fields there, that we would be able to con Knox County would be able to continue to lease Bower Fields. Until the uh, until the legacy parks completes their ball fields, D does I mean I, I, yeah I understand what you're saying, but I think you know looking out seven years and then to to what degree is it is it a six month extension is it a year extension is it in per perpetuity extension um, you know it's it's seven years right now and and then you know the the, the lease would expire regardless of the rezoning or not. Yep. I do think, yeah, I mean, in, in, I'm in seven sharing, years we start getting I, there. I just have a concern, you know, as, you know, as the negotiated deal that we did. And look, I don't know how I would have voted two months ago had I been on a commission. Um, but, you know, I do have a concern that we could end up with Legacy Parks having a piece of land with nothing on it and the development because the cost to develop is so expensive that we can't find the... 15, 20 million dollars to do it. And I think the 15 to 20 million dollars, that is to develop the park, not ball fields. That's to develop an entire park system. Correct, correct, yes. And so I, I do think, yeah, if we're getting close to seven years, you know, my client agreeing to be locked into something now is that then the the building of new ball fields then goes further on the back burner. You know, it, you know, this property is leased by Knox County for, for, for no money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do think my client, you know, my client, this, this is his family property that he later recently acquired a few years ago. Very invested in this community, very invested in, in, in his name with, associated with Bower Field oh. and has strong ties to the community. And, and I think, you know, if, if it comes to a situation that, meaningful discussions with Knox County, absolutely. Yeah, I, I just have a concern that that could be a potential loophole where, you know, we end up developing the South, not that the ba new Bower fields are gone, and then there's a potential that there are no replacement fields. Mm -hmm. I understand, yeah. yeah, and I'm just looking out and tying, you know, my client to something seven years down the road, and I, I know if, if Putting something on the back burner, knowing you have more time, allows it to go further on the back burner. It's my client tells me, "No hurry, get back to me when you can." It's, it's. I get. It. I, I want to keep I everybody. I just kind of wanted forward. to share with commission yeah. that you know I kind of feel like there's a potential loophole on this where you know if they just wait seven years, that they can develop the property and that there's you know, we may develop the new ball fields and we may not. That's right, yeah. So we all need to make a commitment to do that to the community. So, and I gotta go.
and I'm sorry to hear, Commissioner, about Thank you, Thank you Commissioner, Commissioner Jackson. You're in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you so very sorry. Much. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Close, for being flexible for that. Very sorry for your loss. Um, yeah, that was kind of my point all along when uh, this proposal for uh, the uh, rezoning um, and uh, all of that uh, turning uh, this legendary ball field into commercial property, our, our community really just had one request. Can we get guaranteed funding before we give a rezoning? What's the, you know, what's the hurry? Seven years is plenty of time to come up with, you know, funding, you know, for this. If, if that's the case, then, then we just wait. They're, they're not going to bill for seven years anyway. So we have that as our clock. So that was really the only request of the community. You want the rezoning. We, we want a guarantee that the ball field is built. And we're landscapers, so just at a bare minimum, it's going to be $6 million just to put in the drainage system and bring the soil level up so that it doesn't flood. So people are saying, well, we don't know if it's, you know, $15 million, $12 million, $20 million. Well, that was the other piece. I said, why don't we have this property evaluated? You know, that's what we would do if we were buying the property. We do a little due diligence. Oh, we heard it's a swamp. <laughs> get a hydrologist, get an engineer, get a report, get a recommendation on building a drainage system. And then you have some contractors come in and you bid it. And then we know how much it's going to cost. And then we build in our, our, you know, our fundraising based on the facts, not based on whether we think it could happen or not. And P.S., by the way, we're not sure as a community that we want this ball field put right in the middle of our community. There are, there are other issues for us as well. It's not just the funding, but the ball field there is really the noise level is going to be huge. And it, they don't just come and play once a week. They play probably five, you know, five days a week there. There's big lights. You know, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of traffic. And, you know, we're surrounded by hills and mountains. And how sound works is it reverberates. That was the other thing that we asked for, was we wanted to have a sound engineer come in and do an evaluation. Is this a suitable place to put a ball field? You know, adding insult to injury. We have all this development going on, and now we're going to slap a ball field down on you too. <laughs> you know, and all the noise and everything else that goes along with it. There's just a lot wrong here. And to be in the hurry up offense, to get this passed, before these other county commissioners are gone, I said, please, can we have a timeout? Can we just push this? Instead of it being voted on by the lame duck session, let's have it voted on by our new county commissioners. So our requests were not outlandish. They seemed to be reasonable to me. Guarantee the funding before we give, you know, the rezoning. You know, do some due diligence Hire an engineer, hire a hydrologist, find out how much it's going to really cost to build a field. Do a sound engineer. Let's see, is this a suitable place to put this ball field? All of those are rejected because we've got to give the developers everything they want. Who did this really benefit by the hurry up offense? Did it, did it benefit the community? Could they have just put it, you know, a month or two so that we could get some of these things done. I don't think that any of that was unreasonable. I think it's very reasonable to send this back. Let's have a review of this based on the growth plan. Again, we have thir over 1,300 people have signed our petition saying we don't want these changes. 
we, you know, we're reasonable people. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for, where's that $15 million going to come from? Is it coming from the taxpayers? I don't want to pay it. You know, I don't think that that's a reasonable thing. It's an unfunded mandate that was voted to give to our community, an unfunded mandate, no ball field. And th this is the other piece of it. You know, you guys hold all the cards. There's no buyer for the ball field. Without rezoning, they can't turn around and do anything with that. They, you know, they did three 10-year leases. That's what's at play here, three 10-year leases. What if you guys had said no to the rezoning? What are they going to do? They're going to turn around and sell it? They're going to turn around and say, you know, we're, we're just going to not have the ball field here anymore? They bought it as a ball field. Nobody's holding a gun to anyone's head. It has to be commercial, and it has to be done right now. We think it was a reasonable request to ask for a little bit more time. Let's have a few meetings with the community. What's wrong with that? You know, this is a lot of stuff to ask us without, you know, we come to these meetings, but no one really asks us what our opinion is. Never. We're not, nobody's inviting us to any meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Margie Grace. Margie Grace. Thank you for your time. I live at uh, Sevierville Pike. Uh, I don't give my address because uh, we have a little local law fair going against ourselves. Um, we find that our uh, political speech is being shut down by a past commissioner uh, and to the tune of several hundred dollars worth of fines. So we don't really like to make ourselves as available as we were. It's a really uncomfortable position to find myself in. This case was especially egregious. Staff recommended to delay hearing the case. Accordingly, no staff report was prepared. This commission, I assert, are not experts in planning and rely upon those staff reports to advise a prudent, informed decision. Why did we break this long-standing protocol? And what can we expect from you in the future? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Forrester? Taylor Forrester, 1111 North North Shore Drive, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37919, here on behalf of the property owner. Um, Senator DeLass, asking that you deny uh, the resolution. This plan amendment was approved by County Commission on August 19th, 2024. The meeting, uh, lengthy discussion for uh, proponents in favor of the amendment request and um, those in opposition to the amendment request. Very, very lengthy uh, discussion that went on, I believe, for over an hour. Uh, there was a motion to approve the amendment of the land use classification uh, and that was ultimately approved. Again, this occurred uh, approximately 60 days ago. Commissioner Hill is, is correct. While this was discussed and decided to be, be heard at that county commission meeting, it was because this application had been filed well before the adoption of the uh, new comprehensive land use plan uh, well before it was determined that plan amendments would be heard quarterly and further well before it was later then determined what those quarterly meetings were, uh, when those quarterly meetings were to be, uh, were to occur at the Planning Commission. Again, the application had been, had been pending for, for quite some time, all, all prior to that. Um, Again, same same position, same arguments on this is, you know, the the, the precedent that, that gets established um, when you have a new election and new commissioners coming on and, and different 
districts have different interests and in wanting to send something back to have it have it um, looked at again. It, I believe, Commissioner Hill, you you brought this up um, on the the first resolution related to this that that dealt with not initiating the process as the property owner and this process being initiated on you. Um, the unprecedented nature of that you know it's it's one thing when you initiate the process and you and you put your property out there to be rezoned you may not get what you want you may get the rezoning you want or you may end up worse off than when you started but you're the one that initiated the process you're the one that brought it to the table um, what we have here is something that's been approved it's been vetted it's been discussed at multiple levels there was a planning staff recommendation on this and it, it was ultimately i believe if i recall correctly the the corridor mixed use which was adopted again that was just 60 days ago when you look at the requirements now to amend and i and i, and I hear you know, this isn't to amend the sector plan or land use plan it's just to send it back and have it reconsidered but that's initiating the process that's putting it in motion and you know you must show that there's obvious error or significant a mission in the plan, or you must approve two of the following, that there's change, um, conditions of change, either the, um, new utilities projects in the area, new data to support the change, and the proposed uh, changes support, um, the policies and, and actions, goals, objectives, and criteria to a new plan. Again, this is not the case. This was approximately 60 days ago that this was approved, and we'd ask you to deny uh, the proposed or requested resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Forrester. Sorry. Point of clarification. Uh, well, there was a staff report hurriedly read out in the, in, at the request of the commissioners. That was not per protocol ever published anywhere for the public. We, your constituents, who have lost faith in you, and lost faith in the process, really unto losing our own, who we know, our, what we know, our citizenship and our sort of God-given sort of, you know, the decent way to live, you know, appropriate interaction between our elected officials who serve at our pleasure, really. Technically, there was a staff report prepared. It was heard for the first time by the public in the moment of. You guys, it's wrong what you're doing. It's wrong what you've been doing. You're not looking big picture, and you're not giving a damn about the people who put you in those seats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Fox, do you want Commissioner Hill to go? Yes, Madam okay. Chair. Commissioner Hill? Thank you. Um, again, I just, just for a point of clarification for the new commissioners um, that were not here in August, um, it, it, this, some, of, some of the things that have been said have made it sound like the, the votes that were made were very arbitrary and, and not well thought through. Um, this could not be further from the truth. There, there, was, there was probably more talk and deliberation, and there were, in fact, meetings that occurred, and, um, uh, and, the, th and the things with the ballpark. I know um, Commissioner Frazier um, spoke um, at length about, about all of these issues. So I just want to be sure that the new commission understands that um, if everything that, that has been said is not, is not the first time we've heard it. It has been spoken, it has been deliberated, and it has been voted on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Commissioner Fox? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think I have four points. First of all, we have a substantial change here. There's uh, been a lawsuit that was filed since uh, uh, since that decision was made in August. Uh, and I want to address this concept of, hey, this has never happened before. This is unprecedented. Well, 
it was contemplated that this body could do this by virtue of the power being incorporated into the code uh, when that was passed. So that really is a, that is a red herring. That's, that point is a red herring. This body has the power to do it. It doesn't matter if it's unprecedented. It has the power to do it. But I'll tell you, what kind of precedent would it establish? It would establish a precedent that uh, when a body says, this is how we're going to, this is the, pr the procedure we're going to follow from now on, uh, that the body then says, okay, you know, we did, we did, we did not do what we said we were going to do, and we're going to correct that. So that's the precedent this would establish. That's a good precedent, that we're going to do things the correct way. And we made a mistake. Now, I want to put on my CLE hat just briefly, uh, the CLE teacher hat briefly, and explain the difference between a, a, uh, a law and a, the difference between a substantive law and a procedural law that may change things. This happens like with uh, uh, appeals in court and so forth. When there's a procedural law, a change in procedural uh, a procedure, that applies to whatever's pending at the time immediately. It does not relate back, uh, it, the, uh, the item appearing before a judge, for instance, uh, does not relate back to what the law was before the procedural law changed. Okay? When it comes to substantive law, that's a different story. So that's why with respect to uh, item 14, when the Planning Commission said, well, we did all this because he applied under the old law, the, the uh, land use law before Advanced Knox, well, that made sense because he was, they're, they're talking about substantive law. You know, what, what was the land use substantive law at the time he originally applied? And, and we're going we're gonna to give him a, uh, uh, a grandfather. We're going to grandfather what he did. Uh, but that's not how it's supposed to work with procedural law. With procedural law, it is applied immediately. And so therefore, uh, now, Mr. Moyers, I, I'd love to hear your um, input on this, but maybe it's different when it comes to uh, a legislative body acting versus uh, a court. But uh, that's why on page, when it says on page 73 that Vance Knox uh, has a quarterly review cycle, uh, that that should have been imposed immediately because that was, that's procedure. That's how the cases flow through the system. See, that's, that's the difference between procedure and substance. Is, is that, it, does that, does that apply to this situation as well? Commissioner Fox, uh, as you have pointed out, this case is involved in litigation at the moment. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, I would I would respectfully decline uh, to uh, to take a position that might influence the, the litigation. I'm sorry to put you in that position. That's I apologize. No, that's that's, okay. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's that's the final word, Madam Chair, and, and I just move that uh, this resolution be passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to take a moment before we take the vote just to say um, a ball field wasn't held over my head. Um, and I'll be kind of honest, I take offense to that, frankly. Um, <clears throat> we all sit up here and work very hard, and, um, and we understand that people are not going to see eye to eye, and they're not going to agree with us, but um, I think we've gotten away from, you know, everybody kind of thinks that politicians or representatives are on the take or we've done something unscrupulous, and that's just not the case. And it, like I say, it's very, it's inappropriate and it's quite offensive to me. Um, I was very clear, um, matter of fact, when Ms. Close called me that this is not something I can support for numerous reasons. I can't support any of these. One, they're in litigation. Um, if they're in litigation, they need to be vetted through the court. Um, then to be told that if you go with us, we'll take it out of litigation. Sounds a little political to me. Um, the only change that I've seen, respectfully, Commissioner Fox, is we have a new commissioner. And um, that, to me, is not a, a major change uh, in the situation. And I have to echo what Commissioner Hill said. Um, to think that this is anything conservative that the government is going to come in and start rezoning people's property or downzoning because of a political election or because you don't happen to like whatever the situation is, is 
it, just take precedence out of it. It's just dangerous. And, th and that's not something that my district, my people, would be okay with me saying, I'm going to come in and just rezone you because I feel like it. It's absurd. So that's my take on it. Um, so it's, this isn't something that I can support, and I, and I was very upfront with Ms. Close at the beginning. We had a nice conversation, and I appreciate all your, um, your talking with me, and it was very respectful. So we have a motion on the floor, and we have a second. So all in favor, aye. All opposed, no. And we'll probably need to do another roll call vote. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Commissioner Thompson? No. Commissioner Fox? Aye. Commissioner Jay? No. Commissioner Frazier? No. Commissioner Rawls? No. Commissioner Durrett? No. Commissioner Oster? No. Commissioner Jackson is absent. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Hill? One passed. Does it pass which to vote? It's, it's, it's Commissioner Jackson. Oh, it's Commissioner Jackson. I'm sorry. So the motion failed. Next item, please. Item number 18, 24-10-4-RZ, -dash -dash is to initiate an application for rezoning from CA General Business to A Agricultural. Property is located at 8744 Chapman Highway, parcel ID 138104, part of. Thank you. Mr. Fox, do you want to speak to this before the opposition comes to speak? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to uh, ask Director Brooks, this may, uh, the, the previous uh, denial of my resolution may uh, place this proposed rezoning out of, uh, out of kilter with the current land use. And so, uh, Director Brooks, do you have an opinion on that? Let's see, I have to look at what the, it, it, yes, it, it, um, what the current one. I'm sorry, it is way past my bedtime. What is the place type? Oh, I have to look at what the place type is. Order of exchange. Because ag is we, not considered a zone um, in the quarter of mixed use place type. Right. In other words, uh, that that zone permitted. is not a related use to. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So. Um, well, my, uh, my only statement on this is that uh, I believe that the land use, the underlying land use that was approved was approved out of the uh, quarterly review cycle, and that's what this zoning is based upon, and therefore, if the uh, quarterly, because it's my position or that uh, the land use was inappropriate. The, pre, uh, the land, the current land use is inappropriate. That uh, the rezoning should be restored to uh, what existed, say in June of 2024. So, therefore, I'm asking for a resolution to place a application with the planning commission to have this property this parcel rezoned uh, back to agricultural all right we have a motion on the floor by commissioner fox do we have a second second, second by commissioner lee um mr thompson if you're okay oh. i'm gonna oh you're okay good um we are back to miss close you're good okay um miss grace She's gone. Okay. Mr. Forrester. J 
just briefly, in, in response, the prior land use classification would have not been related either uh, to the requested uh, rezoning to agricultural, I believe. So you have the town center mixed use. It's not a relate, directly related or partially related. Um, Agricultural is not directly related or partially related to the town center mixed use land use classification. And so it, regardless, we'd say it's moot. Thank you. Okay, so that was all the um, opposition I have for that. So do we have any questions? Commissioner Thompson. No, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just for a point of clarification, so the existing uh, place type, since the resolution, previous resolution did not pass, the place type is that town center mixed use. And so the current zoning is CA, but agriculture is not at all related to it, correct? And so that's, that's what we're asking for in this resolution. Uh, actually, it, now it, uh, I'm just reminded, and uh, it was Mr. Mullins that informed me of this, but I think Mr. Moores may agree that uh, basically, regardless of what zoning applies, I think agriculture is always considered a legal zoning. Is that correct, Mr. Moyers? I would defer to Director Brooks. She's, I think she just said that, that under, uh, under the place type that that we have now that agriculture would not be an allowable use, but I, I don't know. I think, I think the case law, Mr. Mullen stated to me at a community meeting that the case law holds that you can't be not, you cannot legally be denied agricultural. Uh, well, I think what he's, use. I, I would have to talk to him about that. I, I, I know that we have some statutes regarding right to farm and things like that. That uh, that prevent you from preventing from from preventing people from engaging in agriculture by use of zoning, but I don't know that that means that the A zone is allowable in every place type. I think that's the distinction. Mm -hmm. But without talking to Ben, I'm not sure if that's if that's what he was referring okay. to or not. Okay, thank thank you, Mr. Moyers. Okay. So I see no other questions. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Fox and a second by Commissioner Lee. And we'll take the vote. All in favor, say aye. All opposed, no. I think that's pretty, but I, I think I'd rather just do a roll call. Commissioner Thompson. Commissioner Fox. Commissioner Jay. Commissioner Frazier. Commissioner Rawls? No. Commissioner Durrett? No. Commissioner Oster? No. Commissioner Jackson is out. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Hill? No. Commissioner Lee? Aye. That motion fails. Next item, please. Item number 19, 24-10-5-RZ, is to initiate an application for rezoning from PR planned residential to A agricultural and RA low density residential. Property is located at 8744 Chapman Highway, parcel ID 138104, part of. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fox. Simply put, Madam Chair, I move that these Knox County Board of Commissioners uh, adopt a resolution that uh, places an application with the Planning Commission to seek rezoning of this parcel from uh, planned residential to agricultural and low density residential. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. Um, Ms. Close, do you want to address? We got you down for this one also. You're good? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Ms. Grace is gone, and so now it's Mr. Forrester. I'm trying to make sure I get everybody. Just obviously on behalf of the property owner that we are against and oppose um, this resolution, similar basis as, as stated on the previous items. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, we've got a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor? 
I, 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 I'm sorry, let me start again. I'm, I'm getting a little confused. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Um, and we'll just go ahead and do a roll call, just to make sure. Commissioner Fox? Aye. Commissioner Jay? Commissioner Frazier? No. Commissioner Rawls? No. Commissioner Durrett? No. Commissioner Oster? No. Commissioner Jackson is out. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? And that motion failed. Um, we've got to go back to number one uh, because she wasn't here earlier. So if um, we can read that one one more time. I'm not sure if she's here or not. Item number one was resolution 9-D-24-RZ, which is a request of Avera Lynn McDaniel for resenting from A Agricultural to RA Low Density Residential. Property is located at 7509 Nichols Road, parcel ID 125016, and this is in the 9th Commission District. Thank you. And um, is the applicant here? That is for Miss um, McDaniel. Okay, so this is in your district, Commissioner um, Fox. Would you like to postpone this for I a would, month? Madam Chair, thank you, yes. Okay, perfect. So we've got a motion on the floor to postpone for a month. Do we have a second? I'll second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, next item, please. We're almost there, guys. Just yeah. hold on. We had no zoning appeals received. Our next item is item number 20, ordinance 0-24-9-101, amending the Knox County Code Appendix A zoning, Article 4, Section 4.108, creating standards for drive through facilities, Article 5, Sections 5.31.02 through 5.31.03 pertaining to the CA General Business Zone and 5.32.02 through 5.32.03 pertaining to the CB business and manufacturing zone to allow consideration of drive throughs facilities within these zones and section 5.37.03 pertaining to the CR rural commercial zone, section 5.38.03 pertaining to the CN neighborhood commercial zone and 5.91.03 pertaining to the TC town center zone adding references to the drive through standards. This is amending ordinance number 0-90-9-130, adopted September 10th, 1990. Do we have? Motion, motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Frazier and a second by Commissioner Jay. Mm -hmm. And this requires a, a roll call vote. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Frazier? Aye. Commissioner Rawls? Aye. Commissioner Durrett? Aye. Commissioner Oster? Aye. Commissioner Jackson is out. Commissioner Russell? Aye. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Commissioner Thompson? Aye. Commissioner Fox? Aye. Thank you. Uh, next, we have public forum, and we have Olivia Harris signed up to speak. I'm not sure if she made it or not. I don't see Ms. Harris. Um, in other business, I want to let everybody know it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so if you'd like to wear pink next week, please do that. Um, and we also will be setting up the EMS visit. Uh, that is for November 21st from 1 to 2, so if you'll put that on your calendar, and Drew will send out a reminder email. Um, and I guess that's it. Does anybody else have any business? Commissioner Fox. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I, uh, obviously we did not see eye to eye. I did not see eye to eye with all my colleagues, but I want to thank each one of you all for indulging my, uh, expounding my uh, development philosophies in my reasoning. I thank you, you were very gracious. No one like overrode me by calling for the question or something, and it was a very late night. So thank you very much to each one of you. You're very welcome, thank well, you. Sir. Commissioner Jay, do you have anything or did you just hit your light? Just hit your line. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion uh, to adjourn. Second, and we're out. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening.